Hey guys, I'll make this quick. So this video is going to be very long because I'm going to be going through the whole process of converting a Blender asset into a game ready mesh, baking, texturing, the whole nine yards. So we end up getting this uh, high poly piece and we're going to decimate it down into this low poly version which um, what goes from about 130,000 tries down to about 16,000 with bevels and about 6,000 without bevels. So a crazy decimation process. Going to show you how you can use n-gons and game assets. Anyone who's saying you can't is um, not telling you the complete truth. We're also going to show you how to bake um, substance painter texturing. This isn't going to be like a traditional tutorial, but um, you can watch how I approach it. So sit back, split this into a few sessions if you need to. I know it's a long video, but I think it'll give you a lot of value. And make sure you download our free game asset guide. It's a little PDF that you can kind of refer to whenever you're making your own game assets. I use it all the time. So you can grab that in the link in the description. Anyways, let's get started. So we're going to be converting this little sci-fi laboratory door I made into a game ready asset. Um, current issue in the state it's in right now is this is not prepped for um, game engines at all. It's not optimized, nothing. If we go to the scene statistics, you're going to see we have about 178,000 tries, which is way too many. So the goal here is going to be to uh, take this down to a lower poly, retain the high poly, unwrap it, do all that good stuff. This will not be a tutorial. This will just be me working and commentating what I'm doing, kind of Master Z on 1001 style. So this won't be a normal tutorial. Don't expect my usual teaching methods because this is just going to be me working so you can kind of study what I'm doing. This would just be too long of a process to do a tutorial on. If you want to learn more in-depth stuff, I have other videos on that. So I'm just going to get to work here. So um, basically, I want to take this entire mesh and decimate it down to a lower poly version. So I have a collection right here for the high poly. And I have nothing in the low poly because I haven't started on the low poly. So um, what I generally do is I just start piece by piece. What I, I, uh, I take this piece, duplicate it, move this to the low poly. And then we can hide this piece just to kind of indicate it's done and kind of get to work on this. So kind of the way I work is I create the high poly first and then do the low poly after because um, some people do the low poly to high poly strategy. I think it's a lot more uh, or a lot less versatile because if you start with the low poly, you have to build on that form and you can't add additional form. So I like doing the high poly. I can work as free as I want and then decimate it down later. So I also try to keep everything as non-destructive as possible. You're going to see that um, a lot of these details right here, see all these details? A lot of these, instead of having to, for example, these little bolts right here, um, that was pure luck, it was that one, but for example, if I had had these little bolts applied, these details can be baked. So they're just taking up unnecessary geometry counts. So if these were, you know, applied, I'd have to go in here and start dissolving vertices and things like that. But if you're working non-destructively, you can just remove the Boolean like that and you don't have to do any extra work. So generally what I do is I go in here and I look at detail that could be baked and um, I just remove it. So for example, these details down here could be baked. I just got to find which is which. I could probably just use the ever scroll function to find it, but I'm just going to get in here. Okay, number five and six, so those can be baked, especially, you know, cuts like that on planar surfaces. You can easily, easily um, bake that detail. So this is Boolean two. I'm going to remove that. And you can already see it just kind of becoming a much lower poly version of the original mesh. I don't know if there's too much extra detail here that could be baked out. You have to be careful. For example, you can't bake that. Um, no clue what in the world those are. Just going to delete that, I guess. And then I just keep cycling through and kind of figuring out exactly what I can and can't bake. For example, um, this detail right here, can't really bake that. Let me zoom in a bit to take a look. Yeah, can't really bake that stuff. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else I can bake. So um, at this point, what I'm going to do is come in here. Let's power save. We're going to smart apply all of our booleans. Let me move my mic a bit closer here. 
And um, I do mid poly bevels. Mid poly bevels look a lot more natural because uh, if you have no bevel at all, the edges are perfectly you know hard. But if you have a nice soft bevel, they look better. So I just use a one segment bevel. The poly count is higher. You can see right now there's 13,000 tries, or if I were to remove it, it's about 7,000. But um, with the way modern graphics cards are nowadays, it can handle the extra count um, very easily. And I think the improvement in quality is simply worth it. Um, but it doesn't matter too much whether it's you know off or on. I just prefer it this way. And I have videos on mid-poly bevel strategies, but I'm um, not going to discuss it too heavily in here. I'm just going to kind of work. It's really straightforward. A mid-poly bevel is just a one-segment bevel. Okay, so you're going to see for the low poly, we have way too many segments on, you know, these bevels here. We could easily come in here and, um, if I can actually check or deselect, we can easily come in here and dissolve out some of these edges and just make it a bit lower poly. And if we do that to all of them, that's going to have a, a really big impact on the triangles. My guess is we're going to get down to 4,000-ish triangles. I'm not sure. That's just a guess. But um, anyways, this is just a very easy kind of therapeutic thing you can do is just get in here and dissolve out this stuff. Now I want to go to checker deselect and assign a shortcut to control Q which is the default quit blender but who wants to quit blender? I just removed that. And then I can come in here and control Q everything and um, just make these bevels a bit lower poly. I'm just going to really come in here, control Q, control Q. It's a lot easier than having to go to select every single time, so control Q like that. And you're going to see we went from like, what, 12 segments to 4, and that's going to really start saving us um, a lot of poly count, especially as we go around here and take care of these other areas. And we're going to actually, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself here. All right, we're going to come in here. I don't need these marked. Um, control Q. I'm going to have to offset that by one. And we can just do that area manually. And you're going to see right here kind of what the bevel does. This is why we're going to end up using a wait for the limit method. But we can deal with that when it comes around. So let me come in here. Control Q. Control X. Control Q. I'd really recommend just assigning a shortcut to, you know, when you're trying to decimate these bevels down a bit. And you want to be careful to not hit the holding curvature edges here. That's why I end up actually offsetting the area by one and we actually get something a bit more, um, what's the word I'm looking for, a bit more pleasing. Okay, we're going to do that. And you can just see how quick this process really is. So that's why I don't mind it. Does it take a little bit more time compared to if you just had the low poly created and built on it? Yes, but rarely is that the final form I'm going to end up wanting. So that's not a strategy I actually prefer to employ. You know, there's so many different ways you can do things. And if something works better for you, then by all means. But this is a strategy that I, I've been using for a while now. So I just really want to get in here and do things as I normally do it because it works for me very well. Do that. Just gonna unmark those and grab that. Cool. Let's dissolve this one and maybe slide that down a bit. I don't know. It should be fine. I'm gonna control Q these right here. One more time. Awesome. So yeah, the goal here is just to really make this thing as, you know, low poly as possible. And that's going to be good for our bakes and stuff like that. Now, this interior area, my guess is we can delete it out because there's going to be a pipe kind of hiding that. But you're going to see there's kind of like a little opening you can see through, so I might avoid doing that. I already did a run of this thing and I realized that probably wasn't the best choice. So instead of deleting out this back area, I'm just going to go for my good old checker deselect. So we're just going to get in here and just try to select this area as much as we can. This would be a good time to have my pivot around cursor setting turned on, but I really can't stand that setting. It just annoys me. So I think that's everything. Let's check. Yep. I'm going to control Q. 
and do the same thing here. It's a bit hard to see inside here, but you know, it's all right. Then I get in and control Q and I somehow missed this selection, which isn't, which isn't a huge deal. So we'll get in and just dissolve these guys out. And you're gonna see these are a bit close, so we're just gonna merge these together. It's not gonna really hurt the curvature all that much, so I'll just do something like that. I'm using machine tools to merge things quickly, by the way. If you wanna use the add-on, it's free. It's a fantastic tool. And we'll just merge that at the center. It's probably fine. Yeah, it looks good, cool. Okay, so we have that. This is a lot lower poly, which is perfect. Um, I'm gonna do this one a bit more manually, so we're just gonna get in, dissolve out every other area, and take care of this one. I probably shouldn't even bother removing these markings because we're gonna have to do that again later anyways, as you'll soon see, so we'll just leave it. If anything, I could just control shift click to resharpen and do things that way, but eh, just too much too much blue for me right now. I'm gonna do it deal with that later. Alright, same idea here. We really gotta go in and dissolve. You know, I was um what was I about to talk about? I was researching some laptops yesterday. I'm thinking about getting one of those um Alienware 17 inch ones so I can kind of have like a portable workstation now trust me I'm not a fan of uh, working on laptops but I think it'd be pretty cool to not have to be on my desktop out of the, all the time I could you know go work at like a coffee shop or something or I don't know go on a trip somewhere and, and work that way just thought it'd be kind of cool so aside from this stuff that's kind of what I was been doing recently is the thing is, the, these gaming laptops are so expensive, but I need the performance for the work. So it's like, you know, it's kind of a trade-off you have to make there in terms of like, do you want to spend the money? Well, I, I probably do if I want to have a, a good mobile workstation. So I'm thinking about getting one, but if there's any like better laptop recommendations you guys have, let me know because the ones I was looking at were like three grand, which is a... is you know, quite a bit pricey, so I'd really want to make sure I'm actually going to end up using it consistently to justify that price, because that's, I could probably pick up a 3080 or a 3090 at this, at that price, assuming the scalpers aren't running rampant again, I'm not sure, they probably are. Okay, let's go in here and power save, I'm going to dissolve that out, because, hmm, should I? I don't know, I think I'll leave it. Okay, this is easy. Control Q. Control Q. Okay, we're going to come in here and do this one a bit more manually. Just like that. Okay. Control Q and then Control Q again. And you're going to see this is already a lot lower poly. The triangle count right now is with the bevel is 6k, without it is like 5 something. So we've already pretty much have this in just a few minutes of time. And one thing I know a lot of people are going to ask a lot about is, well, what about the N-Gons? And my um, sarcastic response would be like, well, what about them? But as a teacher, I can't feel, I won't feel good doing that. So, uh, you know, the real answer is they don't matter if you know how to handle them. For a static game asset that won't be deformed, N-Gons are totally cool. And I'm going to show you kind of my process for dealing with them. Because you can't just leave N-Gons willy-nilly and export it and hope it works. It's not going to work like that. There's some very clear steps you have to take to um, actually use N-Gons in your mesh if you want them to be compatible. Or, or at least, you know, shade properly in game engines. And eventually we'll be doing a triangulation portion in this video to show you. But... Um, the simple answer is N-Gons do not matter for static hard surface game assets. But if you want to start deforming stuff or do organics or all that jazz, it's going to be uh, a lot less, um, or it's not going to be possible at all really. So, 
come in here and get all of this. Why aren't these selecting? It's because I'm zoom in, zoomed in too close. See how it's like stopping here? Is that like a clipping error? I'm not sure. Try 0 0.005 maybe. Yeah, I think it's a clipping error. I don't know. Okay, why does this not want to select? Come on now. Okay, I'm going to get in here and just... I should circle select. I don't know why I'm using box select so much. I think it's really just out of habit. I use, you know, box select so many times that it's oftentimes just easier to do things that way. But um, it's also not the best. This is where pivot around cursor would be good. Maybe it's the orbit around selection. Is that the right one? I think it is. Yeah, I think that's the one. See, it just, it just annoys me the way it works. It's not like a bad thing, but I, I just prefer turning that off. It's just annoying to me. But in that case, it would just be easier to use. Okay, I'm going to offset this by one. And then just do this one more time. Um, dissolve that out. And there we go. A lot lower poly. And what do you know? I missed an area. Jeez, this navigation is just annoying the hell out of me. Okay, got to make sure I get this area. So let me just go in and... Box select, control Q, dissolve, dissolve that again, and just kind of merge these together. Some of these are pretty close by. Cool, and then we'll go in and power save. I always like to have backups in case I make like a severe change. You know, some people might be wondering, why don't you just go in here and use quadri mesh or something like that? And the answer is, although that add-on is good for a lot of boolean cuts like this it's not the most accurate i could even show you if we you know resize this to 5000 and detected it by hard edges it's actually not going to give us the most clean result it's okay right but you're probably going to need a much higher quad count to even get something remotely functioning we could try like 15000 and play with the adaptive size a bit i'm still kind of you know haven't used this add-on too much but things just are not as accurate so yeah that's why I don't use quadri measure plus uh, in my opinion you can just get a bit better results doing things manually I guess it depends what you're doing but um, the last thing I, I plan to do with this thing is retopologize in the quads manually at all because running triangulations does everything just as easily and you don't have to deal with all that retopology stuff and sub D if you if that's the route you choose to go. Just a waste of time. You know, there is something to be said about mesh tessellation whenever that becomes a big factor, but uh, I, I think it's there's so many factors and depending on the workflow you're using and what your goals are that there's simply no all encompassing all encompassing, excuse me, answer. So I choose to not Assume and do something like that. Okay, control Q, gotta offset it. I wish the offsets would like detect those holding edges there and I wouldn't have to offset it each time, but you know, what can you do? And already this thing is looking superb. We do have this massive shading stretch right here, which we can fix by just marking these right here. So we'll, we'll eventually do that later. I'm not going to stress it right now, but yeah, we're going to eventually have to deal with that. We're going to deal with the shading issues, potential artifacts. All of that has to get taken care of. Literally all of it if you want to have a decent result. So we'll eventually get that done. We're almost done with this, actually. We just have to get in here. And what in the hell is this? Well, I have absolutely no clue what happened here. Some sort of weird, like, oh, I see. It's a result of this little combination problem occurred, but we'll fix that. Okay, I'm going to come in here, control Q, offset, dissolve. I'm really curious what the poly count came down to at this point. It's got to be like at least, at the very least, double, and I think we already noticed it was before. Ooh, that's no good. Okay, this is probably, 
I used an incorrect amount of bevels right here, I think. And this is why you always want to go with an even segment on the bevel modifier because then you end up getting these types of issues. So I'm going to have to come back in here and snap this back up to the correct spot and do that. We'll offset and then offset again. And we're almost done here. I feel like I could time lapse through here, but I also think there's something to be said about, you know, showing the entire process on video. I think it's something people kind of enjoy. It's like a, it's almost therapeutic doing these types of things, just watching, you know, topology get cleaned. And I think we got just about everything here. Let's just, you know, take another look. We want to make sure we cleaned it up as much as we could. Um, these little, let me go into cavity. This little kind of border right here could be baked. So what I'm going to do is delete the verts and then what we can do is take advantage of those quads going around and just hold the F key and then dissolve out these. These could all be dissolved out a bit more like that. Same with this area and this area. And then for this little crevice right here, we can do the same thing. Take advantage of the quads we have going on, hold F, and then dissolve that out because that detail can be baked as well. Cool, so I'm trying to think, I don't think we should dissolve these areas out because it's just going to look way too faceted in my opinion if we dissolve that. It's not terrible, but I think I want to keep the curvature as it is. I think it'll just be a much better choice overall. Now, what I could do right here is Control T, Alt J, these areas to run the quads through and just, you know, keep the triangulations kind of forced for later on. And we'll just check the inside here as well, see if that needs taken care of. Looks like those are good, so could I technically come in here and maybe create some end gons to use things? Sure, but it's just so insignificant in terms of poly count there. I'm just going to leave this one alone. Okay, cool. So what is this? Let's define these sharp edges here and hopefully fix that. Okay, so take a look here. 3,327 triangles on this one with a bevel. Without it, we're at like 2.6k, and that's fantastic. That is way better than what we had before, which is like well over 10,000. I don't remember the exact number, but you can go back and look. So um, at this point, what I want to do is get all the hard edges marked with a bevel so that way we have a nice see the difference bevel versus no bevel this just looks nicer so what i need to do is um first of all control tilde on hard ops b weight and sharp then resharp in this area and you're going to see it picks up the angles based off of 30 degrees but that also means it gets some undesired selections like this and that's um personally not what i want so this is where we have to get in here and do a bit of manual unmarking because then we're going to get like, you know, these areas where these are marked, we're going to end up getting these double bevels going on and it's just going to add an extra poly count. You can kind of see the difference there. So yeah, that's kind of like a, a trade-off we have to do for this method is we have to come in here and just make sure any weird areas that got selected get deselected, but it's not too big of a deal. It's actually quite fun, if I'm honest. Okay, let me power save. Or actually, I'll do it after I'm done with this. Okay, this area right here. We'll get all that. Unmark. Get all that. Unmark. Unmark. Okay, cool. Really easy process, doesn't take too long at all, but the, the reason these are getting marked is because these clearly fit the 30 degree threshold of our sharpness markings. And if we went to a different value, then we might end up not picking up the hard edges we actually want. So it's easier to deselect what we don't want than it is to select what we uh, do want. And also, I missed this area, so Control Q, Control X, Control Q, Control X twice right there. Cool. Gonna need to unmark those. 
And I think the Bevel Weight strategy is going to be the best option in terms of versatility for wanting to get these edges marked as you want. I'm going to mark that right there. And also, let me remove the seams. I don't know why I have seams here. Remove seams and remove creases. Don't really need those. They're just going to be annoying to look at. And you're going to see now that these are marked appropriately, we don't have this shading stretch anymore when the bevel modifier is on. And that's exactly what we want. Okay, cool. And I'm fairly certain I probably missed some areas like that one, um, this one. And I think that's about everything. Let me also mark this area because that didn't get picked up. Check the inside, check all down here. Check any weird areas we may have missed. Like right here, for example, I missed that one. So I'm just really trying to make sure. If you miss one, it's not the end of the world, you know, but the goal is to only mark those sharp edges of the B weight. We also missed one down here. Going to unmark that. Going to unmark this. Unmark. And I'm fairly certain that's about it. Besides, these didn't get picked up. And if those don't get picked up, we're going to have bad shading, so we want to mark those and define the shading a bit better. We could even mark these right here to pick that up. And you're going to see, even though this is low poly, it looks still almost very high poly in a way. Which is, you know, good. And we do have some shading issues right here. I could care less, or I couldn't care less, because the pipe's going to be hiding it. So we're not going to worry about it. Only worry about what you actually need to, you know, don't waste your time worrying about just petty, trivial things that don't, won't even be noticed at all. I'm gonna come in here and yeah, we're good. Okay, so this is the low poly, we have a bevel on here. Like I said, you could just go to the strategy of removing the bevel and it would still look okay, but I just think the bevel makes it pop a bit more and it makes the triangle count a bit higher, but um, for modern graphics cards, who cares? Cool gonna hide that I'm gonna go back into the high poly and just work on you know other portions here perhaps we'll do like this big area duplicate move to the low poly and then hide that one and just get to work here so as for a detail that can be baked this might bake okay so we're just gonna go ahead and try it um, first of all this needs to be applied that detail Hmm, let me think. Not sure how well it'll bake. I think it'll actually bake okay. It's not like a super obvious area, so let's remove it. And removing that's going to actually cause some problems. So you know what? Maybe not. Maybe we'll just apply it. This right here can be baked for sure. Um, I don't want to... I want to apply this one, but I don't want to apply this one. I want to remove that because that can be baked just fine. Detail here in the back can probably be baked. Now, these types of bakes won't be the cleanest, but they will work. And they're such small areas that I generally I generally don't worry about it. So I'm not going to really care too much. Um, that probably will not bake. This is a wedge. You know, the areas where you actually have curvature and form, these are areas you can't bake. These are areas you have to actually apply. So when it's defining the form of the, um, of the shape you have to actually apply it. Whereas the hole here that was on the top before isn't defining the form. This hole here isn't defining the form. Although if we baked this, it would just look awful because of how deep the hole is. So we're not going to do that. But this isn't really defining the form. We could probably remove that. And um, we'll just smart apply off the mirror. Turn the bevel to one segment. Set this to weights. Resharpen these edges and pick up any slack. So um, first of all, I'm going to dissolve this out. Now this is going to have to keep these connection points because it's uh, every boolean needs two connection points, but um, we'll just leave it as is, like that. So we're going to come in here, control Q, control Q, there we go. And same for this area, we'll just come in, control Q, let me power save as well. There we go. Did 
dissolve that. And then we'll just do the same thing in this area. Okay, we gotta do these separately. This is the one thing I don't like about the checker deselect and blender is it doesn't work um, very well. It's not super versatile and it's very manual in a way. So hopefully one day that'll be a bit improved, but it's not like a, a huge deal, I guess. We can dissolve that out. And this one's super low poly. If we turn off the bevel, it does 242 tries. And if it's turned on, it does like five, 600, whatever. So yeah, this is just fine. We're gonna go ahead and hide that. Let's take, we'll take these pieces, duplicate, move to the low poly, hide these. And then same idea here. Well, a lot of these booleans aren't doing anything. They're part of the slice. So you can just apply, get in, one segment set to weight and um, recalculate the sharpens and do some work here. Do some work here. Oops, those were the holding edges, gotta be careful. Cool. And I'm just gonna go in here and symmetrize to save myself some time and then should be good to go. Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay, gonna get in, hide that. And now we'll do this one. Let's duplicate it, move to the low poly, and then hide it in the high poly. And just gotta find that right piece. Here it is. This one will be a bit trickier, but a lot of this detail can be baked, I think. Maybe, maybe not. Um, first of all, we got to apply that. Maybe it can't be baked, I'm probably wrong. But um, this right here, maybe will be baked, okay? Whenever I'm, here's the rule I go by. If I'm not sure and I'm hesitating, I don't wanna risk it. I'd rather just go for detail, so I'm gonna apply that. I don't wanna take the risk and end up just having a bad result. This right here can be baked, that little hole right there, so we'll remove that. This can be baked because it's, you know, just a cut on a flat surface. So this could be baked, but it's not going to look anywhere near as good as this geo because of how big it is. So I'm going to be applying that. Those lines right there could be baked, I think. Down here, can remove that. And I'm watching my roommate's dog, and he is out. He is having the world's best nap, so... <laughs> Sorry if you can hear him, but uh, let's go in here. He just popped up right when I yelled him. <laughs> he just looked up. He's like, what's going on, bro? But geez, did you know dogs could snore that loud? I, I mean, I don't think my mic's picking up that much either, but I can assure you he is snoring pretty loud. This, I don't know how well it'll bake. I'm going to apply it. This, um... Let's see. I'm going to apply that as well. I don't want to take the risk and then smart apply the rest. One segment set to weight. Just to resharpen it. And this this one should mostly um, work without having to do too much manual labor here. What I am going to do is clean this up. This is a lot of extra geo we don't need. I'm going to do all this. Gonna do that. Then we're gonna come in here. Just like that. Cool. And then we'll come up here to the top. Awesome. Now these weird edges are part of the auto smooth and most likely we'll just end up having it smooth this way for the bake or you can play with the auto smooth and make it a bit higher and do things that way. Doesn't matter too much but I'm just going to go ahead and symmetrize, make sure the other side's okay and I think the only other area left to clean up is these little portions. So easy enough, this is kind of the portion where things just start to get repetitive and boring and you're like geez and um, normally it wouldn't be as boring because I'd just be watching like a YouTube video or 
chilling to music or something, but um, I'm recording a video here, which I love recording videos, but repetitive stuff on videos is not always the most fun for me, so that's alright. I, I really thought this would provide you guys some value, which is why I wanted to record something. I could have done this off camera, but you know, whenever I see an opportunity to teach somebody something, I always try to take advantage of it. Because everyone wants to learn and I enjoy teaching and at the very least sharing what I know, which is not everything, but I do know quite a bit in Blender, so I like to distribute that knowledge with everyone. And you guys seem to enjoy it, so thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate the support. I'm gonna come in here and I'm really getting tired of these incorrect offsets getting selected. Oh my goodness. What in the hell happened here? Okay. Well, you know, I'm kind of glad when these situations happen because it pre presents us a really good opportunity to teach something. Uh, this was something with a bevel. Something fucked up with the bevel here and isn't working. So instead of, you know, worrying about it, we're just going to fix it. So let's come in. And this is where just understanding how to manipulate topology can be a pretty useful tool. And just, you know, while I'm here, I might as well take advantage of this, um, selection. There we go. Okay, cool. So, things are really easy to fix once you understand how you can delete things and how the forms work when you delete things. So, it's a really easy fix and I don't really stress out whenever one of these weird issues happen. Okay, these are the, these connection points are absolutely awful. So, what I'm going to do is just run in here with a knife cut and then do that so I can dissolve those areas out. Cool. And what we're going to do is... Hang on a sec. Okay, the edge is already there. So I'm just going to take this and move it up. Just so that way we have some consistency going, right? And then we should just be able to fill that in and there we go things have been fixed and i think that's you know some of the best value you guys could get from these videos is not just what i'm doing here but also how i'm fixing problems when they come up because it's a really important skill to have is to diagnose these issues and know how to fix them that's why i always say add-ons are great but also a fundamental understanding of the tools is um you know equally as important so they come in here Offset, offset, there we go, that can, this can get deleted as well, or remove, or maybe not, no, this can't, forget it, cool, and then we can just symmetrize to save ourselves half the time. And I think this one is done. Let's check for any weird markings, which I don't believe we have. So this one is 2.1 without bevel, 3.4 with bevel. It's a bit high, but there's not too much left. I mean, I could come in here and maybe do some additional work. Probably not going to change too much. Oh, well, I forgot about this right here. So let's get in here. This should actually save us quite a bit of poly count if we can really get into this one. And then just dissolve these areas out a little bit. There we go. That should at least save us uh, a little bit more. We can dissolve that. Okay, there we go, down to 2.1, so that was where a, a big problem was coming from. That will be fine. Without bevel, it's 1K, so that is totally cool. Going to come back to the high poly. And what else could we work on? Maybe this piece right here. Actually, let me delete these decals. I don't actually need them. And why are they still here? Interesting. For some reason, these decals got placed in... This collection, we'll just remove those. 
remove these. Decals are good when you're doing just regular blender stuff, but not in here. Or rather, not for game assets, so it's just kind of in the way. I'm gonna get rid of all that. Okay, awesome. Did I... Okay, I didn't remove this one yet, so Shift D, move to low poly. Hide it, and then hide this one in the high poly, then we can just get to work in here. Find this one, we'll do one segment, set it to weight, recalculate, and make sure hard and normals is turned on to avoid that weird kind of faceting chamfer look. And I don't know what happened here exactly. Something got merged somehow, some way. So once again, don't stress the problems you run into, just fix them. We'll just go in here and join. There's usually a clear path to solving your problems, much like we have here. Cool. Okay, this one we're going to have to do a bit more manually because the checker deselect won't be an option, but that's alright, we do that. And for some reason, it's even worse over here. And then just get in and... Boom, there we go. And that is about as low as we're going to get. I don't know if maybe I can delete out some back faces. Uh, not too sure. Not going to worry about it. Going to get in here and hide that. And we're actually making some decent progress here. We don't have a crazy amount left to do. This window is just in my way and is annoying. So what I'm going to do is work on that one. I'm going to come in here. And this one's easy enough to work on. We'll do that. Let's also set it to weights. And we don't need to recalculate anything. It's already marked properly. And boom, that one's done. Cool. All right, now what else do we have? Let's do these little cylinders because cylinders are by far the easiest to work with. So we're going to come in here. So we're going to do that and recalculate those. Set it to weights. Okay, so for this one, we're just going to come in here and control Q, control Q. I don't think I could get away with another one. It's going to be too faceted. And I want to make sure the bakes still turn out somewhat decent. And why did these not sell? Oh, they didn't select all the way through because I didn't select them. Okay, let's get in here. And first of all, do something like that. And then we're going to have to get these, so I'm not sure of a quicker solution to these, so I'm just going to quickly go through and select, unfortunately. You know, there are some tools I really wish could be, you know, more ingrained into Blender in terms of these type of selections, because I don't actually know of an easy way to... That, that, this would have to be like some sort of algorithm detecting the offsets going on and things like that. And I simply don't know of a current solution to that type of situation, but I suppose it's not a huge deal. I'm not going to stress it. Um, let's come in here. And take care of this. And this we're just going to do manually because checker deselect will not want to work as intended in these cases so we're just going to get in it only takes like what 15 seconds to get all this and i guess time will add up but there's not too many cylinders on this one we can make this even lower poly for sure so and this is saving us a lot of poly count i mean just think of all the vertices getting removed at this point it's quite a bit okay gonna have that gonna have that that one's done. Now we just have to deal with this side right here. Now I'm not too sure what's up with this. Oh, that's just an edge we can get rid of. Okay, so we're going to come in. Do one of these again. There we go. And let me show you a trick for this one. So instead of going in here and you know deleting every single one of these right here, uh, I think a much better solution for 
this type of situation would be to delete out these faces and oh, I was hoping the dissolve would work on those vertices okay I'm gonna finesse this because I don't want to go in here and dissolve all these out manually it's gonna take way too long what I am going to do is what's up with this oh I see okay what I am gonna do though is come in here just run a random cut like that delete out these right here all these faces that should work and then I should be able to just go in here and do a similar thing on this portion delete those faces and then delete these this is just like the best way I can think of finessing this situation and we can do that do this delete it and then bridge everything so we'll bridge those edge loops and I think that all, that area will bake just fine anyway so we're gonna leave that and go ahead and hide it and get back to the high poly and really just get back to work here some more cylinders going on so what I'm gonna do is duplicate these, move them to low poly, hide these here, and I'm just going to do one because th then I can duplicate it up and move it, so this will be a really easy solution here, going to get in, whoops, wrong one, do something like that. And we'll come in here and um, go into face mode, then edge mode, then checker deselect, then oh, I thought it would detect all the way around. See, this is just the, the annoying thing about Blender is these selection choices. There should be something a lot more versatile in these types of cases, but there's not, or at least none that I know of. So we're going to come in here, and now we just have to take care of these. So I'm just going to go in and um and I actually thought of a much better solution we could go in here and shift G to select the amount of adjacent faces then dissolve it out that way and then run some face fills by clicking F and automating it and that would actually be a lot quicker now for this interior area this could actually be baked so we're just gonna fill that in manually um, we'll just literally delete out those faces then fill this in and um, extrude S0 like that. Removed zero vertices. Okay, I guess we're good. And we're just going to do this one right here, which is incredibly easy. This one is literally just a double checker deselect dissolve, and then we're good to go. And I'm just going to delete the. Actually, before I delete it, let's just duplicate these up. And. Hide those, delete those, and there we go, cool. So that's done. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the high poly. We're actually making some decent progress. We're not too far away from the completed result. So this latch is gonna be a bit complicated, I think, maybe. Not 100% sure. It's actually already pretty low poly, if I'm honest. Let's duplicate it and move to the low poly. And then hide that and just see what we can do here. I know for sure we could at least go in and dissolve out some of this area. You know, there's gotta be something we can do to kind of make it a bit lower poly. I'm also tempted to try to actually bake out that detail. I think that detail might actually bake pretty well because of how flat it is. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna delete out all this interior stuff. That's gonna save a lot of triangles for sure I'm gonna also just alt shift click this whole area um, we could do select select sharp edges and then just deselect these areas delete those vertices and then just fill in this portion and that should actually bake just fine so let me go in here and 
Alt H. Yeah, that's totally gonna bake fine. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna hide that. And for the door underscore high, there's there's another latch down here. So what I should have done is um, let's go to this one and Shift D to move it down, and then just overlay it. Save some time there, and then this one can be hidden. Okay, cool. We're gonna go to this one. And this one, just duplicate them. Or maybe not, maybe we'll just do one at a time to avoid any potential issues. Gonna get in here. There we go. Awesome. Okay, gonna hide that. Duplicate this one. Smart apply all that stuff, move it. And this one can be cleaned up just a bit more as well. Okay, we'll go in here. And then offset that, of course. Okay, cool. And then just a few more up here. You know, I'm so focused that I realize I'm not even talking about anything exciting. You know, whenever I watch Jerry's videos, I always notice that he has this knack for just, although sometimes he goes on the funniest tangents, he has this knack for just talking about stuff as he works. And for me, that's actually a bit more difficult. Perhaps we're just, uh, just the way our brains are programmed, I'm not sure, but that's something I need to work on, I think. Let's do three seg segments on this one and then resharpen it. That's actually one thing I forgot to do on the other pieces here. Um, but I think this detail's already baked in, maybe. No, it's not. So we'll do that. Harden the normals, recalculate. And also, this, should be, this outer miter type should be set to arc. Make that a bit cleaner. And for this one, once again, one segment. We'll be going through this just to correct everything later on. But I just thought about that right now, so I decided to do it. Okay, now we just have these pieces right here. Um, let's see. Duplicate. Move. Turn off the high poly. This one, just going to need a full-on smart apply. Get rid of all those bulls. One segment. Wait and recalculate, which happened to rhyme. <clears throat> Come in here, do that. Do that, and then we just have all these on the inside. Cool. Whoops, control Q, we'll do that. And then we just have the upper portion. It's always more exciting when you get close to the end because eventually it's just like, come on, this process is so repetitive. I'm just ready for it to be done. And we're kind of nearing that point. Okay, this will be too faceted if I remove that, so I'm going to leave that. Go ahead and hide it. It's just these small pieces that are annoying. We're just kind of repeating the process. Um, We'll take this one, we'll move it, let's smart apply everything, one segment wait and recalculate, and what I actually want to do is duplicate that one down and just overlay it, just to save some time, cool, and now we're just going to do the same thing, really get in here. We'll offset it. Cool. And then we have something like that. All right, this is a bit of a problem. I'm going to have to cheat and move that out a little bit because that might cause some issues later on down the line. Might cause some big problems, but this is a compromise I have to make right here because this just um this won't this isn't gonna slide in that manner. 
Okay, I'm going to duplicate this and just move that to right about there and delete the other one and just call it a day for those. Hide that and hide that. Cool, and we have this piece and then just a few other random ones and these ones will be the easiest by far because those don't have too many curves going on. So I'm going to duplicate this and move it to the low poly and smart apply weights one segment recalculate someone needs to make a rap song out of that call it like shape and recalculate or something has anyone made a blender rap song yet i know um cg matter and curtis halt had this little rap battle going on several months ago which is quite funny but i'm anxiously awaiting an actual blender rap Come in here, get all this. Oops, gotta make sure I get all those selections going on. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Cool, so that one's done. Awesome, so this one needs to be hidden. There's these little things right here. I'm not sure what they are. Some little bolts or something. And these will be easy. We just gotta smart apply eventually the unwrap we're gonna have to keep the mirror but for now i'm just trying to compromise on this area and this will be a really easy cleanup dissolve some of that out cool and then just get in here Cool, that one's good. Awesome, so we have that. We'll just uh, hit it with a symmetry. Symmetry over, I guess we're gonna have to do mirror over the cursor, aren't we? And then apply the mirror. Okay, cool. So we're gonna hide that, get back in here. This bar up here is really just bothering me. So I'm just gonna knock this one out because it'll be easy enough. So duplicate it, move it. Getting kind of quicker at this, aren't I? I don't know how well that'll bake. I don't think it'll bake well at all. So I'm just gonna get in here, wait, sharpen it again. And um, you know, this could actually be dissolved because this little indent would bake just fine as well. So I might as well just get rid of these extra edges that aren't contributing too much, shouldn't I? And just make this really, really simple. Okay, that's kind of holding a bit of the curvature, but... Hmm. Not sure, not sure. Okay, we might need to just leave those edges and... Unmark them at least, or just resharpen. And just see what we can actually dissolve out. You know what, I think this will be fine. We could just take care of the bottom portion and call it a day on the rest because those have to be held. So we'll get in here, we'll do that, we'll hide it. Go back to the high poly and hide that one, save, power save. Got another one of these weird things. So what we're gonna need to do is duplicate that and move it. Um, smart apply. And you know the drill, one segment set to weights with a recalculate. I'm gonna have to offset that by one. And then do that. And let's offset this, offset it again. Dissolve, dissolve. I'm really liking this checker deselect hotkey, it is absolutely amazing okay so that one is good we're gonna control T alt J this area to clean it up control T alt J shout out to Jerry for showing me that trick never would have thought that thought about that beforehand um, these details could be baked on the high poly so we're just gonna hide that we don't need those I'm gonna get in here to this little doorknob thing I'm gonna move that I'm gonna go to the low poly 
And this area right here can be baked pretty easily. So what I'm going to do is just delete that out. And then we'll just fill this in. I think F, um, the F2 add-on makes this easier, right? Then we're just going to merge those together. Cool. And then these aren't really holding the curve. Well, they kind of are, I guess. So perhaps we shouldn't dissolve those. But we will dissolve these. Cool. These right here. Gonna have to do some finessing. This is actually from KitOps, this little handle. So unfortunately, these weren't prepped. So I have to deal with the uneven bevel counts here. It's a bit annoying, but I don't think these were intended to be for use with game assets. So, you know, what can you do? Still a good add on, can't complain. I'm just trying to fix up what I can. Slide that a bit. As long as you're relatively matching the curvature, you're not going to see too many problems in the end. Um, can just fill that, I guess. And is there anything else we could do? We could delete the back face. We don't need that. Also, can delete all that back area. Kinda. This wasn't really... This insert wasn't the best setup I've seen. Maybe what I'll do is move that one out, um, hide it, and then these areas we can dissolve out. And then just fill that. And just do some more random dissolves right there. Cool. Uh, I think that'll be okay. That should be fine. We'll leave it. Is there a bevel around it? There is. So as a matter of fact, we'll just fill the whole thing and deal with it later and we're going to hide that little doorknob thing cool and to come down here and deal with this this can be baked or should be baked so it's a pretty detailed insert I'm not sure if I'm gonna end up keeping it maybe I'll just do a stamp and you know substance painter when I end up texturing that but I will duplicate this and move it set it to weight with one segment and then what we do is just, um, we offset it, offset it, offset it, and then offset it. Cool. This one's good. And this one is good as well. Awesome. So we're just going to have to recalculate that one, turn on the hard and normals. And we are so close to finish, guys. Look at this. All we have left is this portion here. And this is just going to be incredibly easy. A cylinder is like two clicks, right? You just come in. Um, hit this twice. Let's make sure we don't have any weird selections going on. Okay, for some reason it doesn't want to check or deselect. Uh, I just realized it's basically, let's just select that one. Hmm. I think it's because of the um, interior selection being there as well. So we'll just do this one more manually. That's fine. Awesome. Do the same thing for the inside here. And then same thing for the inside. Cool. And then at this point, we do the trick we did before. Shift G, the adjacent faces, to dissolve that out. And then we can just hold the F key and round that one in. And then just do the same thing here. I could have done like a symmetry, but it'll take like the same amount of time setting up the symmetry point. Or maybe not. I don't know. Either way. I just uh, did a little bit of this one off camera, just quick enough, you know, but I'm just really finishing up the rest of these pieces right here. They're incredibly easy. They don't take too much time. I just really got to get in there and get to work, you know. All right, I'm going to go in here and smart apply. going to do one segment set to weight, recalculate, you know, the drill. I'm going to come all the way through.
and let's offset that by one there we go this one could probably just be dissolved out and this one what we're gonna do is drop a loop like that and then just join it in that way and then continue this one up through here and that one should be okay enough I guess okay then we're just gonna go down here go all the way through Same for that one. Okay, cool. Fantastic. Okay, offset, offset. Cool, then almost done with this piece. And this is like the final stretch of this um, low poly decimation portion. And fortunately, it doesn't take crazy long. It just depends on the complexity of the model. And also, keep in mind, I didn't originally plan to make this model into a game asset, so I probably would have done some different approaches had I originally intended for it. So it would probably be even less time spent if I if it was that if uh, that was the case. Excuse me. <clears throat> so we're gonna get rid of these. Going to recalculate. Gonna get in here. And boom, that one's done. Hide that one. Then literally one more right here. This is the last one. So it's going to be nice and easy. Going to get in here. Going to still have a solidify on it. So going to get in here. We'll select this one manually because of the over runs on there. It's not too big of a deal. Going to do that and do that. And then Control T, Alt J, this area. And yeah, I think that's it. I think the rest of it is good. Let me go back in here. And now what we can do is turn all of these on in the low poly and just take a look at all these guys turned on. And this is going to be our low poly mesh right here. So low poly and high poly and I don't know where these corners went I'll just duplicate the ones from here and move them over not really a big difference okay so here's the high poly you can see the difference in just you know regular detail and this is the low poly quite a bit less detail than the other one but there's gonna be a pretty significant difference in the you know scene statistics here so this one has 19,670 tries but that is with a bevel modifier. I guarantee you it would be at least half if I turn the bevel modifier off on, you know, this whole area. If I went in here and just, you know, turned it off on just a few portions, you're already going to see we're like getting closer to 15,000 or whatever. So I guarantee you this, if we weren't using the bevel, this would probably be around 8,000 tries or so. That's my guess. But um, given that this is, uh, you know, this is a pretty detailed object. With a bevel modifier, this is actually pretty decent. And this is the point where we can just kind of look at the whole entire thing and figure out what else could we remove that could be baked pretty well. And the answer to that is, I don't think a ton really. I mean, maybe this little crevice could be removed, but it's already kind of like a, a hole going in around there. Maybe this area could have been removed, but it's not like a, I think it's just gonna look nicer overall. There's not too much we could have really removed. Maybe these little portions right here. But for what? What are we going to save? Like 3,000 tries or something? Not even. So it's just kind of like a, a balance of what is worth your time, you know? What's what's worth investing all that extra energy into removing? Now, I'm not too sure why there's two in here. I'm going to go ahead and delete that one. Not sure why there were two. Anyways, looking at it though, I actually do think that um, this could bake right here, but it's not going to make too much of a difference. But I do think we could actually patch this area up. I think this will end up baking quite well, uh, contrary to what I said before. So what I'm going to do is actually patch up this portion because, you know, we can save a little bit more poly count right here. So I'm going to go ahead and join up this area we'll select these verts move them and smooth them 
I don't know what tool I should use here. Space, I, I, I have no idea. I'll just kind of move that manually, but really what I need to do to patch this area up is I need to merge that. Gonna merge this. Okay, it's gonna be tricky. Yeah, it's gonna be <laughs> really tricky right there. Um, we'll just delete those. And then this can be like deleted. Okay, gonna get rid of that. You know, this is all easy enough to remove. So we're just gonna come in here, delete out this extra, geez, extra set of faces and um, merge this up. Yeah, delete the faces, delete that. And that will be removed. And I actually do think that's gonna bake relatively well. So I'm gonna go ahead and Alt X and hit that with a symmetry because this is a symmetrical piece. So we're gonna get rid of that. Let's make sure nothing's hidden in there. And you're gonna see that dropped us like a thousand or so. So it's not terrible. And I do think the bake's gonna be fine regardless. This might bake as well, but I don't know if it's going to be the cleanest bake, so I'm not going to bother with it. I'm trying to see what else I could remove. Well, that's going to be for the latch detailing, so I don't want to remove that. Alright, so just to show you the difference here, 18,770 tries with a bevel modifier. And on this one, 168,479 tries with a bevel modifier. The difference here is these bevel modifiers actually have three segments, whereas our low poly bevel modifier only has one, and you can't really see much of a difference at all, so it's gonna bake pretty well. So just, yeah, just to show you the difference, we made a very, very, you know, big drop in terms of poly count, which is incredibly important. Now I'm wondering why we have this weird shading bug going on. Sometimes what you can do is use a weighted normal, but if we do it to one, we're gonna have to do it to all of them when we join it together. So we'll figure that stuff out later, I guess. And at this point, we just have to check for any artifacts. And the best way to do that is to go here to face orientation and um, check for any red areas. So this right here, I'm not too concerned with. Let me just um, delete those out. I don't even want that. Yeah, I'll just get rid of that completely. Cool. Um, and I'm just checking for red areas. Sometimes you'll see like skews of red, which don't really mean much, but like right here, we have a pretty clear artifact going on. So what we need to do, um, it's probably an overlap on that. So what I'm gonna do is just remove that. And that should be fine. I'm gonna go around and keep looking. Okay, same idea for this one, just a bit too close for comfort. So we're gonna have to dissolve that one out. And I also notice we're missing some edge markings right here. And that can be merged right there. Okay, cool. And I think the rest of that one's okay. Just gonna check the inside of here as well. Are we missing any markings? No, we're not. Awesome, so now's the point where we need to unwrap our model. Now what I do first is I unwrap and then I triangulate. We're going to discuss triangulation later because it's important if you actually want to have a, um, a functioning n-gon mesh, otherwise it's not going to shade or even render at all in a game engine, let alone a texturing engine. So uh, yeah, let's just uh, get to work and start unwrapping. Now the unwrapping process is a lot easier than you might think. Keep in mind we're only unwrapping the low poly version because we're not text we're only texturing the low poly version. We're not texturing the high poly version. Um, and also I want to know why exactly it is kind of weird back here. Is it because the bevel's too big? Yeah, it might be. I'm just gonna drop that, make it a bit smaller. Okay, cool. And like I said, I'm not going to stress about the shading in here because it's going to be hidden by that pipe anyways. If we um, go out of local view, you're going to see the pipes hiding it. So if I wanted to, I could honestly remove those faces. So yeah, I'm not going to bother with it though. It's not too big of a deal. Okay, so let's get to our process of unwrapping. So what I do is I control tilde. I remove these and I do apply seam only. And what we can do is sharpen it. Actually, 
since we already have our edges marked correctly, what we could do is shift G and select by our um, bevel weighted areas instead of redoing the sharpness. And then control E and mark a seam that way. And these are like the general seams we want set up. This is we're gonna have to do some changes here, but in general, these seams are gonna be fine. And if you wanted a lazy seam job, you could just leave it, but I wouldn't recommend it. So what we're gonna do is just call this material UVs. And what I wanna do is go to the shader editor, go to texture, um, image texture, new. We'll do UV grid and just do 4096 is fine. Connect this up here and just see how it looks. We're gonna have to U and then unwrap it. You're gonna see right up front, it's not a terrible job. It does okay, but um, we could make it a bit cleaner. So first of all, when I unwrap, I usually set this to conformal. Conformal generally does a better job in terms of how it unwraps. See the skew over here? If I, yeah, the, the skew going on. If I unwrap it to conformal, See the difference here? It's a lot more accurate. So I almost always use conformal. Now there's gonna be some areas with obvious seams and there's a limit to how well you can actually deal with those on hard surface meshes. But there are areas where you could actually improve this. Like for um, right here, for example, I could probably, let's go here to live unwrap. And you know, I could try clearing these areas. This one doesn't need marked right here. Also, we don't need a bevel weight there either, do we? So we're gonna clear the seam and then make this bevel weight zero. I must have missed that one. Clear the sharp as well. Cool. So we're just gonna see what we can do here. I'm not sure if it's gonna be a ton, but you know, might be something. This area is where it's a bit more nasty. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll get into an area where we can't really see the seam. Let me merge that together as well. Make sure you merge these close near near miss vertices together. I've kind of missed some of those. We'll have to take care of that and just double check. But use what we can do to kind of fix this area is mark a seam in a portion where we're not going to really see it and just kind of see how that chooses to unwrap. I'm going to come in here and clear seam right there. Cool. Um, what else could we do? We Doubtful we can remove that one. That's just gonna probably skew in a bit too much. But for these areas, we definitely can just clear those. Should be able to. And then for the back, um, do we even need that face? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think we even need it. Anyways, we'll do that. This is actually a pretty decent unwrap in there. The question is, do we need these seams right here? Highly doubt it. Do we need these two seams right here? Also highly doubt it. Those are probably gonna end up having to leave. This is a very um, meticulous process, I'd say, to actually get a result that does the work you want. Um, this one we can probably remove. And usually I'm just going based off the aesthetic here. I'm like, what works and what can I remove to make the, not only the TD, a bit better, but also just um, make the unwrapping a bit more optimized. So, like I said, I'm not going to really do a tutorial in this video because the thought process of this is um, kind of a bit confusing. This would have to be a separate video, but um, if you really want to learn some of our unwrapping techniques, you can pick up our Essential Techniques for UV Unwrapping mini course. It's $10. It'll be some of the best ten dollars you spent if you're trying to learn how to do game asset unwrapping so i'd say just invest the money and grab it because we put some really really detailed stuff in there and for ten bucks i mean i think the content is there is worth well more than ten bucks but um yeah we weren't trying to charge anything crazy for it can i come in here and mark that seam um we'll do this area a bit more manually Clear that seam out. This is looking a lot better, I'd say. Okay, we got a really nasty skew down here. I'm trying to see, can we just remove that? Okay, 
Okay, I'm wondering why exactly it's so weirdly skewed. Well, we're not going to even see the seam in here, so we can just mark it. So it's not like that matters too much. You can just hit that with the seam because the pipe's going to be covering it. So who cares? This area, we have, you know, areas where we have a seam, then another seam like that. Generally, you can kind of get away with removing it, but you just kind of have to play with it and test it and see exactly what the results choose to give you. Um, I'm going to clear that seam there. And I think we're going to have to have at least one seam in this portion, so... Hmm, what can we do? We could clear that seam and then... Okay, that's not going to work. Perhaps we'll just leave that for right now and deal with it in a little bit. Try clearing that one. And don't overcomplicate it, guys. A lot of this seam stuff is just trial and error and figuring out what exactly um, works and what doesn't. And, you know, there's a strategy behind how I'm selecting these seams, but um, in general, it's, it, it mostly is just trial and error. So I'd have to do, like I said, you can either grab that mini course or I could do like a separate video on it and discuss it a bit more in depth. But this one's just so long that I can only, you know, show you so much in terms of um, this type of process, so that should all be marked pretty nicely. The thing with hard surface assets is the seams are going to be a bit more obvious depending on um, how yours is set up. In this case, it's still going to look good just because of all the nice angles going on here. So, yeah. I could probably get away with unmarking that and unmarking these probably not these yeah didn't think so okay so there's that one there in the back this one also just needs to see him dropped because like i said we're not going to see it so the best places to put the seams and this has always been the case best places to put your seams are in areas you can't see them or areas where you will barely see them rather but the best case is where you can't see them at all and that's the best place to kind of offset seams to those locations if you can. Um, that generally will give you a much better and more, more appealing result. Hmm, we'll do... It's not too bad. I'm just going to leave that one right there. I think it's a bit cleaner. Okay, let's try clearing this one. And we keep getting this issue. I'm just not digging this weird um, skew we have going on, this, this weird angle thing. Really not digging that at all. And I can't remove this portion because it's just going to absolutely destroy the look. Let's see if this will fix it. No, it's not going to do what I want. Hmm, we'll, we'll come back to that one. That one's going to be a bit tricky. Uh, also, one very clear way to know, like if you have continuous faces like this, like spans of faces going up, you can always remove the seams that continue along those spans. That is one very important concept we show in that little mini course, but that's just one way you know immediately which seams to remove. So, and that's what I usually do. We're going to have to have at least one seam down here. Um, I think there's already one up at the top, so we'll be fine. Okay, this is looking a lot better. This one can be cleared. We don't need that one. We're going to need this one to hold it because it's just going to skew. Come over here. We can remove this one because that's continuing along a span, but it's actually going to end up being a bit straighter if I leave it, so I'm going to opt to leave that one and maybe just remove that one. And that one, for some reason, seems to remove just fine. Actually kind of surprised that worked. But I'm not complaining. If things work out, I do not complain. I just work and... You know, working and hoping for the best is sometimes just a valid strategy, I swear. You just get in and you're like, alright, I'm going to hope for the best here and hope it actually works. Now, I guarantee you I have some missed merges I need to take care of here. So I want to make sure I have no you know, near miss vertices in these portions. Random hole kind of chilling right there. 
I have no clue what the hell's happening on the inside here. Something. But it's going to be hidden by the pipe. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to just delete that out. We can't remove that. But yeah, the other area we can just get rid of because look. I'm um, waiting for the materials to load. That pipe is just hiding it. You can't see anything. So that is cool. And it might actually help with the seams as well. So it's kind of like a double whammy. Okay, let's try... Sometimes it's interesting how these seams affect different areas like that. Okay, well, if I'm going to remove that whole thing, I might as well just take care of all that as well. I'm going to try to be consistent with it. Okay, unwrapping. Let's get in here and... This is just me being extra. Not really no need to do all this I suppose but cool I'm just gonna leave those alone you can't even see in there so I shouldn't be bothering shouldn't be wasting that type of, of valuable time all right so I can remove this one I can remove this one we're gonna have to have these to hold I think we can try it and just see how it turns out it's a bit too skewed for my liking you're gonna have a skew either way I'm just gonna leave that in this one we're going to have to leave in as well. Same for this one, I think. Um, this one, we can we remove it? Yes, we can. And, you know, the more seams you can remove, the better the you know result's going to look in terms of where the textures break off. But for the areas where you can't really see anything, it's like, why are you wasting your time, you know? Okay... I don't think I can do anything here. Yeah, it kind of worked. Kind of gave me something. Continues up there very nicely, but you're not going to really see in there, are you? Yeah, you're not going to see too much at all. Going to need one seam in there, so I'm just going to keep it consistent. And the only area I want to deal with now is, first of all, whatever the hell is happening in here. Just gonna drop that seam and just clear that one. No, we'll just we'll do that. Cool. Okay, so I'm liking this. I'm gonna also drop a seam. No, not there. Okay. Anyways, the only area I want to fix now are these weird chamfered areas because they're just bothering the heck out of me. So I just need to find a connection point that's actually going to allow me to get away with um, dissolving that portion out. And it seems like that one worked uh, to a certain extent, but it's still not holding very well. And I need this area to be straight. It just I, I can't deal with these skews. Those skews are not going to look good and are not going to give us a very clean result. So... Trying to see why exactly those skews are occurring there. I gotta really observe here. I think it's the way it's curving around. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna remove the front portion there. And instead... That is curious. Should we clear that seam? That is a very interesting result. I did not expect that. I'm going to just get away with that. I think that'll be okay. Um, we're going to have a seam somewhere in there anyways, so you might as well just leave it like that. But overall, this is a pretty clean unwrap. See this? This is not bad at all. I'm just really checking for any super obvious issues, which I don't really see. So, yeah, not too bad. So now I'm just going to hop out of local mode with forward slash on the numpad. And we're just going to do... I want to do the bigger pieces first because they're a bit more obvious. So... What I'm going to do is just go to all these bigger pieces here. We'll go to this one, for example. We're going to add the UVs material. We're going to do the same thing. Let's um, select one of these marked edges. Shift G, bevel, and then mark as seam. In this one, we could probably do a little bit of work on, but we don't have to do a crazy amount. So most of these edges are actually already correct. But there are some, like these, for example, that are continuous. 
that we can easily remove and just kind of make the unwrap a bit cleaner overall. Um, I do think I want to keep these though. I'm gonna go down to here. These are continuous across a span of faces here. So this is a good example of where you can unmark and where you should unmark because there's no need to have a break here. Notice that? There's just a break here for no reason. You can just remove the seam because the rest of the seams surrounding the hard edges there are being held. Same for right here, continuous, you can unmark those. But you're going to have to have at least one here holding it, which in this case is going to be the top. And we're not going to see the back anyway, so at this point, let's unwrap. And we're going to have to have at least one sort of seam here, so it's a matter of where exactly do you want to place it. Well, I'm going to place it right there and end up getting ourselves a pretty clean result. And don't worry about the TD. I mean, the ratios are going to be different depending on the size. So that's something we'll deal with at the end. But for now, I'm just worried about getting the materials in here and getting the UVs correct. So that's all I'll be doing here. We'll mark the seam. And just the most obvious ones we can knock out first. Clear the continuous edges. Continuous edges here. There we go. We have some extra geo right here. I can just remove that. Whoops. Don't want to mark that. I want to remove it. Okay, that looks good. Just a matter of how much time I really want to spend on these UVs. My guess is I could just stop right now and it would be totally cool, but I'm just very picky with my UVs. I don't I don't know why. I just it's a very mathematical process, and that's probably why I enjoy it. I just like the analytical approach to it. Some people hate unwrapping. I actually really enjoy it. I think it's something that you have to get used to. It's kind of like beer. I used to hate beer, but eventually you just kind of adapt the taste, you know? So that is, in fact, how I think unwrapping is. Now, this is just taking up like extra space. We're going to eventually take one mirror it to save the space, but... We're once again going to do that at the end, so um, for now my main concern is just getting these seams to look a bit straighter. I mean, this isn't terrible. They're a tad bit skewed. Let's, let's see if I could make these any better. Maybe not. I'm trying to see. Yeah, they're a little bit angled, but I mean, I think the texture will be fine, honestly. We'll just view this as a bigger picture later on. This one will be a super easy seam process. We'll come in here, UVs, gonna mark like that, and let's see. Let me turn off this bevel in edit mode here. Okay. Okay, gonna need all those. Gonna need to dissolve those right there. And at this point, all these extra edges can go as well. I still don't know why we have them. Okay, just gonna do a regular unwrap, and that one's totally fine. I'm just gonna leave it. Okay, we're gonna get these little guys up here. Okay, go to this one, gonna go to UVs and take care of this. You know, the one thing I like about this whole process is this process used to be like really complicated for me, but eventually once you get the, the habit down, it's a super easy situation. And this is kind of one thing I, I hope others get to as well, is that just practice enough and eventually it's just going to be second nature. It's like a language. You don't have to think about talking unless you're learning a language, right? I'm going to merge that there. So yeah, once you kind of master the language of 3D, you don't have to think about it. You just kind of start working and that's why I like about what I like about these processes here is they're very easy, very straightforward and quite honestly very fun. So like I said, don't worry about the difference in TD, textile density. It's not worth your time right now. 
Um, right now we're just dealing with all these other areas here, just one at a time. So we're gonna come in, UVs, bevel, mark the seam, unwrap. This one is basically fine. We can clear the seams on that and on this. And we add some stray geo there as well. Oh, I could probably decimate this down even further. Maybe. Jeez, the way this is set up is just so annoying. We'll do that. Dissolve all of these. I should have done that earlier. I didn't even realize I missed it. Get rid of all these extras. This is because this one's a kit ops insert, so it was kind of already sup that way. I'm gonna scale all these. Cool. And I just lost it. Where was it? This one right here. Okay, that one's done. I'm um, not going to even bother with this one. What I'm going to do is shift D this one all the way down. There we go. And just save ourselves some time. We'll do the same thing for this one. This is a trim sheet material, so I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to go to bevel, control E, mark the seam. This one can be cleared. This one can be cleared as well. And, you know, there we go. Come down. Put it right about there. Or is that a bigger one? I think there's a size difference here. So maybe not. Maybe not. This is going to be easy enough to unwrap anyway. Oh, it's a completely different object. That's why. I'm going to mark that seam. I'm going to clear that one. Call it a day. This is a lot quicker than the low poly process. I can tell you that for sure. Let's remove the mean crease right there. I'm going to go in. Um, select based off the bevel. Mark a seam that way. UVs. Um unwrap and we're gonna have to put a middle seam down and as for this e extrude s0 e extrude s0 okay this is curious this one isn't like a you know super obvious one but We'll just do something like that. Perhaps that was a bit of a sloppy UV right there, but this is a very small portion. You can get away with certain things in these types of situations. Let's do something like that. You know, one way to learn UVs and understand how... Oh, I see the issue. These should be separated. Yeah, these should totally be separated. That's why. No wonder it wasn't working well. Let's try to unwrap this manually now. Ah, perfect. Okay, cool. I was like, I was confused and I was like, screw it. I'm just going to do this, which I'll still keep. Cool. But yeah, if you just study video games and look at how they're unwrapped, so you're going to realize they're not perfect. And oftentimes it's, it's a waste of time to be perfect with them because there's better things to do. It's like, do you really want to spend two hours moving this tiny detail when you could spend that on something so much more important, you know? That's how it should be. I'm gonna come in here and mark the seam, and we're gonna have to have a seam jotted here somewhere. That's the thing with cylinders, that there's always gonna be an obvious seam, so you might as well put the seam um, in an area where it's not gonna be seen, like the back. The seam will never be seen. So, I come to this one, same idea, UVs. Going to unwrap. Gonna clear this and then just right in the back here. Oh, I missed that one as well. Cool. That one looks good. 
also e to extrude s0 and do something like that cool and then for these two i'm just going to delete them well first i'm going to duplicate these up and literally just oops selected the wrong one there we go those two are deleted and now all we have left are just these few other areas did we already take care of this we'll just do this one real quick we come in here, UV this one, that one was super quick. This one right here will also be easy, so I might as well knock this one out. I'm gonna, oops, wrong one, or maybe not. I'm gonna come in here, clear these seams, clear these seams as well, and that's gonna be a good result. This one, I could just duplicate this one, but it's honestly going to take the same amount of time as if I just went in here, hit it with the seam, unmark a few of these. Okay, we are getting there. There's not too many left. I'm going to do this one because it's kind of standing out. So we're going to go to UVs. And I guess I never sharpened this one originally. Got to set this to weight, set it to one segment. And then what we'll do is come in here. Shift G and oh it's already marked here so I also need to go here shift G seam and mark that with a bevel weight as well anyway it's gonna unwrap this and that one should be good next we'll go to the one behind it I'm gonna set this one to UVs same idea mark the seam uh, let's try that again shift G bevel there we go we could probably clear that one out and call it a day. Cool, we're really close to finishing this one. This is actually quicker than I expected. Okay, now we're gonna go here, um, UVs, bevel, mark the seam, unwrap, and we have continuous faces right here so we can clear the seam on those. Clear the seam on those. And also, there shouldn't be a bevel weight right here at all. I don't know why there's any of these. We sharp, we have all these on here. So let me just get in here and first of all, clear the seam, clear the sharp, clear the seam, clear all that. We don't need anything marked there. We can actually resharpen it and maybe not. Okay, let's go in here and just unwrap it again. Okay, we need a seam probably down here to hold those faces and yeah I think that'll be okay um, it's a bit warped right here it's not a huge deal though I'm gonna leave it cool I'm gonna go to this one I'm gonna go to UVs you know the drill I could skip through all this but I really want to show the whole process because I know there's some people who actually will watch these whole videos and learn a lot from them so um i don't want to disturb that curvature right there i'm gonna leave that one cool and then we have this one uvs um bevel this is another one i forgot to do the bevel count on resharpen before i do that let's do resharpen that way and then remove them okay bevel mark the seam we don't technically need a seam in there but who's going to see it no one and we're going to need a um seam in this corner here there we go then we have one more i'm going to go here bevel mark the seam could probably clear those out and any continuous areas as well it's gonna leave that and there we go this is our entire unwrap this is gonna be glass technically we're gonna have to unwrap this as well so just the glass always tricks me out I always feel like you don't have to do it for that one but of course you do just depends how you choose to render the glass in blender and unreal whatever you're doing and we're gonna have to have at least one marking here to hold it cool 
All right, so we have the full unwrap here. This is the entire thing. And at this point, you kind of have to think to yourself, um, so do I want to use multiple materials to make the textile density a bit better? Do I want to do all of the unwraps on one single um, set of UVs? Like, how do you want to do it? And that's kind of what you have to figure out for yourself. And I'm probably just going to do all of this on one single thing. Or I could do the door separately and the little background wall separately. You know, there's two different solutions there as well. So that's actually what I might do. I might do this portion here completely separately. So I'll just do the door on its own. And we'll just use two materials, which means a bit more draw calls, but there's always going to be kind of a balance of power there that you have to figure out what you want to do. So Zen UV is a really good add-on for UV and stuff. I can't recommend it enough, especially if you're going to be doing game assets a lot more frequently. But a, a nice and simple way to do this is you go into edit mode and select everything as is, and you just unwrap it and take a look at the result. And this result's actually pretty good. It's not too bad, but we want to keep the TD kind of uniform here. Now in our essential techniques for UV unwrapping course and our game asset course, we kind of cover Zen UV and how you can take full advantage of that. And I'd recommend, you know, either taking those or watching a video on YouTube or whatever, but Zen UV is just so powerful. Now, I'd be lying if I said I knew all the ins and outs of Zen UV, but uh, I at least know enough to get around. So we're gonna go in here and, no, in here, Zen UV, and I just wanna do a Zen UV unwrap. And this actually does a, a much better result than Blender, I've noticed, so that's why I tend to use this one. And you can also kinda change the settings in here, but anyways. You can kind of see the difference here. There's Blender Unwrap and Zen UV. I don't know, it's not like a huge difference, but I mean, it works. Um, and also, you're going to see we have kind of like a lot of cyclic type of areas here, which could definitely be sorted to kind of separate these into more quadrified areas and have more optimal geo. So for example, I could go in here and press the L key and it's going to select this. And what I'm going to actually end up doing is going up here and just marking some sort of seam in there and that's going to end up kind of quadrifying that area keeping it straight and you can do all sorts of cool stuff that way make it more optimal so that's kind of the kind of what i want to do here um these little cyclic selections not sure where those are even coming from i guess this portion right here if i can select this separately and take a look what i'm going to do is mark a seam in there and that's going to be something a bit more optimal. And I can also remove this back face because um, we're not going to see it. I'm not going to see this one either, so get rid of that. Cool. And this is where I just kind of start optimizing areas that I can kind of break down at least a little bit. And you can turn on this um, sync selection tool so you can immediately see what you have selected. Okay, down here, we'll just go up in the corner and... Um, Control E, mark seam, there we go. And you're gonna see this is a lot more kind of like rectangular and um, this is gonna be a lot better for UV space. So this is just kind of all interconnected somehow. So overall, it's, uh, it's pretty good. Can't complain too much there. I'm gonna go in and hit it with a Zen unwrap and take a look. Okay, I got another cyclic selection right here. This is all kind of connected. Let me go in and see what else I could kind of separate here. Not too much, if I'm honest. I could put that as a seam, and that might give us a bit of a better solution. There we go. And we're already getting something a bit better. The goal is to split these islands into smaller portions if possible, but the issue there is you want to try to avoid the seams as much as you can, and that can be the uh, trickier part. And this is the area, if I go into face mode, this area right here that I would ideally like to split, but I'm not too sure where exactly we should put that specific selection. I mean, there's a lot of potential opportunities. I, you know, I guess you could do something here, but it's just not going to... There's going to be a pretty obvious seam there, which I guess isn't the end of the world, but I think the result might be a bit better. Okay, let's see what else could be kind of split. 
These could be straightened right here. Um, you can use the UV squares add-on. I gotta go into face mode to select those. And as long as they're a set of quads, UV squares will actually straighten it out. Oh, I gotta turn this off, I guess. And it'll kind of straighten it out that way. Cool. So yeah, that's a pretty good tool as well. If you can get things straight and not as curved, like this as well, um, this could easily be... And this is where quads do come in handy, because when you do have quad selections, you can easily straighten them like that, but um, it just kind of depends what you have going on. It's a much deeper subject than I can possibly cover in here, that's for sure. This is definitely, this definitely has some overlaps, and you can actually check that with um, Zen UV. So what I want to do is select this portion right here. So I just recorded a bit more and realized my mic was off, but you didn't miss too much. Um, the issue in here, let me show you. The reason there were overlaps in here is because there wasn't a seam marked in this area. You're going to see right here. Literally, all I had to do was come in here and mark a seam. I don't know how it got removed, but somehow it did, and that actually fixed the problem. So that's what the issue was. And all I'm doing now is just checking for additional overlaps, and generally the overlapping issues are just geometry issues. Because if it's geo, you're probably going to get overlaps. If it's if your geo is fine, you're most likely not going to get them. So what we need to do is check the overlapped islands. There's a few more. Um, not many, but most likely it's just another geo issue. So I'm going to get in here and take a look, and you're going to see there's a random seam right there that is just there for... We don't need either of these, actually. Not sure why I did that. And that's almost fixed. Another overlap right here. And overlaps are very common on these types of models, guys. They're going to happen. You just have to know how to fix them. And you're going to see... Once again, geo issue. Well, not really a geo issue, but a, a seam issue. There's no seam marked here. And that should just about be everything. Maybe not quite. Um, it says there's an overlap right here. I th don't think it's an overlap. I think it's actually some additional geometry we might have. Unless I'm wrong. Let's go ahead and check. We're getting a little bit of a, an inconsistency right here. Also, could make that a bit lower poly. Some random edges just chilling here. Not sure why. Get rid of those. And I think this might just be a false positive. I'm not sure. Let's see if marking that will kind of solve that issue. Yeah, it did. Cool. And you're going to see this is a lot better. So now what I need to do is, first of all, let's Zen unwrap everything again. And I want to go into face mode in the UV editor. And I just want to get in to UV squares and do um, two grid by shape. I'm going to go out of here and just look for all of these that I can at least straighten out, right? And I'm um, going to go in here, two grid by shape. And sometimes it's easier to highlight everything to see. And they have to be quads, otherwise they won't straighten out very well. But this is probably good enough. And now what we need to do is go into UV Pack Master and pack these islands and you're going to see there's actually a lot of empty space here so you can usually pack it a few times and kind of see what results you get um, in this case actually I shouldn't have done that again if you unwrap it again you're going to have to re-add the uh, straightened areas by the way okay I also forgot to unwrap the rest of the mesh with this because I am stupid so we're going to try that again. I was in local mode. I didn't even realize it. I knew something was off. And let's just check if in... Let's Zen unwrap this first of all. And then check the overlapped islands in this case, which shouldn't be too many. Like right here, we have some weird issues going on, which I want to fix. Um, let's take a look here and see why exactly that's occurring. A good question. I'm not sure. Let's see what else we have. Check overlapped islands. Sometimes you'll get like these weird false positives, by the way. So, what I need to do is come in here and check. Right here, we have a pretty obvious overlap. And let's see. Oh, that's because we don't have a seam marked here for whatever reason. I'm going to go in and just fix that. Check the materials. 
can almost swear I did this material right here, but maybe I didn't. Anyways, not the time to really worry about that. If I didn't do it, I didn't do it. No use worrying why, just fix it. Okay, we're going to do that. That should be dissolved out, and this needs like a significantly smaller bevel. This is such a small piece that it's not worth worrying about. Um, Zen unwrap, select overlapped areas, and sometimes you'll get these false positives. Um, this is not really a false positive. Just This is just a mess right here. And I'm really curious. Let's go into face mode instead and seeing why this one's occurring. Okay, it was just a minor seam issue. I did the rest off camera because I was just wasting a lot of time with the random stuff. Um, so what I want to do is come in here, Zen unwrap one more time, do a final overlap check, and I've already checked these. They're some false positives. You want to check them in face mode, and you can see there's actually no overlap occurring there, so I'm not too sure why it's marking it as such. But at this point, we want to... This is the last time we need to do this. We need to go in here, we need to go to UV squares, and straighten out these ones that can be straightened, mainly these two. And um, let's see, is there anything else? This right here, where is that? What does that correspond to? I'm going to put a seam at the top. Uh, if I can select it, there we go. Because that will actually straighten it out and keep a loop for us, essentially. So maybe I should check that before I start straightening everything out. Let's check this one. I'm going to put a seam where it's the least obvious, probably right here, and that should keep everything nice and straight. I'm just trying to avoid these loops right here. I'm gonna go here, mark that. Okay, getting a lot better. This is, see this unwrap? This is before we packed it, so this is actually gonna be a pretty good pack, I think. Um, another little loop on this area. I need to find that. I'm just gonna come in here and Hit this with a mark seam like that. Okay, let's try this again. What else is looped? This thing. I thought I already did that. I'm just going to drop it right here. It's such a small piece that it's not significant. It's still showing. I'm, I'm just going to isolate this one and see why it's yelling at us. Maybe I just need a single seam right there. Okay, I think that was it. I don't think it was continuous in the way it should have been. So select everything. Let's try another Zen unwrap. Cool, so I think we've gotten pretty much all the significant loops that could be straightened. Here's another one right here. We're going to see what that corresponds to. Whatever it is, I can't see it. Well, actually, no, I can. It's the back area, which you need to seam right there to pull it in. And this is still the same same location. I put a seam. Maybe I need to do a continuous seam like that. Or I could clear that one and instead just do that. This is an unwrap a few more times. And are there any more significant loops here? I, I don't see too many to be honest. Anyways, this is a good time to go in here one last time and L select these areas and just um, grid them out, straighten them out. I'm gonna also need to do the same thing for here. Gonna need to two grid by shape that area. Also, this looks like we could straighten that. It looks like a set of quads, which is good. Straighten that out. Any more significant ones we could deal with? I don't, I don't see any. Okay, I'm gonna pack this a few times, see what I can get. I could probably get like 0.74, I'm feeling it. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> what are the odds of that? 0.74, awesome. And that's probably about as, as good as I'm going to get. I could hit it again and 0.741, wow. Yeah, 0.741 is going to be like the best I'm going to get here, I think. But the, the good thing is this is super packed and looks good. Okay, now that we've confirmed that the unwrap's good and everything's good to go, we can combine this into one physical mesh. So what I want to do is first of all make sure all the mods are applied except the um, except the bevels, sorry. Just going to smart apply everything, that's how I do it. And 
control J to join it all together. But what's going to happen is um, whatever the active one is, is going to it's going to override the bevels with that size, um, which to me is fine because they're all roughly the same size based off what I did. Now this red means we just got to flip the normals and should be good to go. And you're going to see it's um, all joined together now. The unwrap is good. We're going to make a power save. And let's um, Zen unwrap it one more time. And that should fix the weird TD issue we had on the handles. I, I have no clue why it does that, but it does. And we're just going to have to do this one more time. This is so repetitive. But um, luckily, we only have to do a few here. So, And I don't know why you have to turn off the sync selection. That's also pretty dumb to me. I don't know why that makes any sense and I know there was one more in here that we were able to straighten out but I don't see it there's this one right here we could straighten that one out just trying to straighten what I can you know just to make things as clean as possible and this one right here okay is this one does this one have end gun oh I need to be in face mode okay what the heck to square grid Okay, this one is just going to have an absolute frenzy with me, so I'm just going to go ahead and pack everything. And unfortunately, we're going to probably use that beautiful pack we had before, but I think we could get back. Oh, 0.744. Look at that. It's even better. Everything happens for a reason. Okay, this is a really, really good result right here. I love that. Now, this seam right here somewhat bothers me. I just don't know if we're going to get a better one. It's not like a huge deal. Um, I could do something like this. Yeah, but it's just going to be like a continuous thing. I'll just leave it where it was, and if it comes down to it, we can deal with it. But I think it's going to be fine. Cool. This is a really, really clean unwrap. I'm curious what this is right here. What are you talking about, Josh? I don't see anything. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's like the pipe's there, the pipe's there. Who cares, you know? You can do little cheats like that from time to time. Okay, awesome. So now that we have these, what I want to do is Alt-H the refs. And good lord, hide that cutter's collection. So this door is done. We can just call this a door and hide that. And this is going to be a completely separate unwrap over here. It'll just be two separate objects to really get a nice uh, TD on both of them. But this should be a very, very straightforward setup. We're just going to go in and um, need dissolve those out. Oh, no, because that's a little wedge. Let's not do that. Okay, cool. So we already did this unwrap earlier. So we're just going to go in, hit it with a Zen UV. And take a look. That's really nice. I like that. Um, a will select everything. And we could definitely take care of these little cyclic selections we have going on. So what I think I'll do is mark a seam up in here. Mark one up in here. And do something like that. It's a little bit turned around though, which is curious. Let me see what would happen if I hit another setup like that. Nothing. As a matter of fact, I think I know the issue. It's because these are joined together. Well, first of all, this is where we can get into the mirroring part. Um, to save a UV space, since these are identical, I can use a mirror and overlap the UVs in this case. So that's exactly what I'll be doing. So now the unwraps will be overlapped. So I can just deal with this side only. And this will save us quite a bit of space. You can already see how much it's like basically double that textile density, which is fantastic. Okay, so we have that. Um, we could also mirror these pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and delete and mirror. And that should be good. Okay, cool. Nothing else we can really mirror. I guess these two could be mirrored, but it might be kind of obvious. I'm not sure. So I might not, depending on the material you use, it could be pretty obvious. So um, this is already pretty good anyway, so we're going to leave it and just see if we can get a good pack. Okay, we have a lot of extra space here, which I do not like at all. What happens, what would happen if we mark down here? There we go. 
that kind of solved it. That's 0 0.819, 0 0.805, 0 0.838. So you're gonna get a pretty good one. Um, anyways, let's just do that little smart apply and join everything together. And just, you know, now we're gonna have to unwrap it one more time, unfortunately. But I always like to do my UV test beforehand to make sure it's all good, um, which it is. So, because if I join things together, then I have to undo it. And if I run out of undo steps, I have to go separate it by, you know, it just becomes a pain. So, might be a bit slower, but it's okay. That's 0.813. Let's get like 0.83. That'd be nicer. 0.817 that is fantastic so there is one thing I want to kind of point out and I don't think it would be a huge issue in this situation but I am going to show you so these two objects are close to each other this one was like a 0.74 for the um, packing and this one was like a 0.8 something those are so close that you can't really see a difference in the res but if you end up getting objects that are like behind each other like this and the res is like look completely different like you see that that's going to be very obvious because you're going to have really high resolution textures here and really low ones here um, but these are so close that you won't see a difference but generally um if you're like in a studio or maybe someone reaches out to you they'll probably give you a set td uh, that they want you to stick with, especially for um, objects that are kind of closer to each other to avoid that type of situation. But in this case, it's so close together that you can get away with it easily. The human eye can't really decipher the sizes there. And if you go into the side, just it, it looks about the same. See that? If it did bother you, there are some um, TD tools. Like, for example, what I realistically, I probably should just stick with a lower one because they're closer together but there are some uh, TD tools in here you can use in textile density you can research that on your own if you have Zen UV but now what we have is an unwrap for our door here and the unwrap is by far the most annoying part so the last thing we need to do last but not least is we need to triangulate this object remember how I said you could use n-gons in your static game assets well you can 100% but you have to make sure you triangulate it because the automatic triangulations done by game engines and texturing softwares are not going to render at all. They're not going to render properly. So what I usually do is I keep it non-destructive. Maybe we'll start with the door. And I add a triangulate modifier after the bevel. And we can go into wireframe and take a look at how it triangulates. And basically what I want to check for is any, um, any sudden overlaps caused by that triangulation. And I can kind of turn that off and on, and you're going to see right here we have a bit of a pull. Um, but we can, um, let's remove that. Yeah, we have a bit of a pull. That actually fixed it. What we could also do is, instead of using hardened normals, we could use a face weighted normal above the triangulate, or below maybe. And you're going to see this triangulate actually did a pretty good job. We just want to make sure the triangulations don't overlap, which is actually what is, um, happening in most game engines if you just export with n-gons straight away it usually doesn't do the best uh give you the best result some of these don't give the best result either like this front face um, usually what i do for these types of situations is i join like this so let me just go in here this is probably the best way to join n-gons that are situated like this is you um let's just select these areas you do something like that. Now you're going to see if we check the triangulation result, it's a lot more elegant in that case. And you got to really check for these pulls in the corner because if you get pulls in the corner, um, there's going to be an issue with the with the shading in your game engine. Another way to check this is to turn on the clamp overlap, but okay, that just caused a mess. It's turned off and I just really want to check in here, see if there's any obvious situations. And you could clean this up, you know, more manually if it really bothers you. It just depends how much you prioritize your time uh, and these types of things. Usually, just doing things manually where they're necessary are going to get you the best result. So we're going to go in here. And that's going to get a bit of a better result. But overall, this looks pretty good. I have my face orientation turned on, so I could pretty much immediately see um, any red. This red's fine but any problematic red that's actually causing the problem. Right here we have some pretty heavy pulls, but 
these triangulations should be okay. What I'm going to do is use the face influence feature of our bevel modifier, and that's going to give you even more accurate shading results. And yeah, I think this is a, a good result here. So that's pretty much done. Uh, we need to triangulate that one, but we also need to triangulate this one, and it's going to be the same idea. Let's do affected hard normals off um, triangulate modifier preceded by a weighted normal set to face influence. And that'll probably give you the best results. Okay, maybe not. Looked a bit weird. Um, anyhow, these are separate, so what we want to do is just check these, check for any weird pinching or pulling that is causing problems in our bevel. Like right here, for example. You're going to see the triangulate is actually causing some grief right here. You can do something like that. It's a really tiny bevel at that point though, isn't it? That's not too bad. It still looks okay. I just want to make sure we're not getting overlaps that are actually going to cause, cause a problem because that will just not render properly in the softwares we're using. So. Cool, I, I think we're good. Turn the triangulate back on. Yeah, I don't see any real issues. We'll just do one more quick fly around check. See if that's a significant issue. Right here is really bothering me. So let's try turning this to none. Face influence off. Okay, that shading right there needs to be fixed. We could try affecting the weight a bit, or in this case, we could just use hard and normals, and that might actually be okay. Just depends on the uh, on the values you see. Like right here, that's where hard and normals wouldn't work very well, and this is why I would go for a, a weight and normal solution, because that will actually fix it. So you have to compromise for some of these areas here, and just kind of play with the settings and see what you can get. Keep sharp would be the cheap way out, but... um. It actually works pretty well. And you can also use weighted normals based off vertex groups. So if you wanted to isolate certain areas, like for example, I could technically go in here, hit it with a vertex group, group 001, and then invert the selection. And this could be like, I guess I didn't really need to put group 001, but uh, you get the idea. Okay, that's still selecting. That's not what I wanted. Let's go in here. Go in here. Invert the selection. Click assign. Okay, why are we not selecting? There we go. Now it decided to work, so then we can go in here and set it to group 003 and only affect that portion. So, very powerful techniques you can employ in, um, in Blender. Let's just check the size of these bevels. Cool, that'll be fine. All right, so we're looking good. The low poly is essentially finished here. We're just gonna go ahead and take a look. Yeah, I don't see any real issues. And, and the surefire way to know if there's issues is to simply bring it into Marmoset tool bag for baking. And you'll know basically immediately, it depends if it shows up or not. If it doesn't show up, you know it's not um, working properly. So. At this point, the door underscore low is done. We have to also triangulate the high poly if we want to bake properly. And this is where things can get really tricky if you don't do it right. But uh, I'm going to show you some of my techniques here. So first thing I want to do is we don't have to unwrap any of this. So just right off the bat, I want to... Um, yeah, I just want to come in here and we'll smart apply this whole thing. Power save again, and we're gonna have to triangulate. But you're gonna see sometimes the triangulations can get pretty tricky when we have the high poly, and we're just gonna have to see how it works by default. This is pretty heavy. Now, you can have the worst triangulations on your high poly, and it's not gonna matter because the only reason we're using the high poly is uh, it's purely for baking. After we're done baking, you could throw the high poly away and I wouldn't recommend it in case you need it again, but you see my point. We'll never need the high poly again, it won't matter. So usually right off the bat what I'm doing, you can see like right here is an example of the triangulation causing some pulls, but 
overall this bevel simply needs to be a bit smaller. And what I would recommend doing is copying these bevel values to both for the best baking results because um, that's just going to get you exactly what you want. So we're going to do that and we'll go back to the high poly here. Cool. So I'm just going to try the default triangulation and if it doesn't work, I have some additional strategies I could show. But from the looks of it, even though it's pulling a bit, it seems like it's working okay. So I'm going to leave it at that. And we're going to have to go to all these other pieces here. And I'm going to hide all this because it's kind of in the way. Cool. So we're going to go in here and just make sure everything is smart applied and ready to go. And let's let's join it together. And I want this one to be the, um, the active object, this guy right here. So control J gonna have to flip the normals it looks like and it should pick up the triangulation it looks like it applied it and that's because I smart applied this one I didn't mean to have that one selected I want to smart apply the rest there we go then we'll shift click on here control J to join and then we can flip the normals there and now we should have a non-destructive triangulation going this is pretty heavy this is this is causing all sorts of problems unfortunately um, as you can see here, this is where the triangulate gets messy, but it, it was already messy beforehand. So um, what I'm going to do, this is a situation where it's not worth my time. This is where I would delete these out and use these on, as a normal stamp inside of Substance Painter because it's just going to actually, it, this is going to be too much of a pain to deal with. So I would just import the normal map for something like this and then paint it or stamp it inside of Substance Painter. So I'm just going to actually get rid of those. Uh, same for this one right here. This one's just too heavy. This little grate or whatever it is. So I'm going to delete that one out as well. We can just use a normal stamp and call it a day. Trying to see exactly what these things are. There we go. Select those. And delete those out. Cool. So we'll just go back in, check the triangulation. I'm just going to look for any visible red artifacts we might have going on, which I, uh, I currently don't see. And yes, I know the triangulation looks absolutely atrocious here, but we're only using this for baking, then we're going to be discarding this model anyways, or the high poly one at least. So that one's good. That one's done. Um, what we need to do is Alt-H the other area. We can hide this, and then for this area, what we're going to do is let's go to the door underscore low real quick and I'm just gonna copy and paste the bevel value over so we're kind of keeping consistent so we're gonna go in here copy that um, let's smart apply everything and join it to this object and then we're gonna go in add a triangulate and this one should be fine as well Blender actually has a really good triangulation algorithm when they have that modifier running. Okay, you're going to see prime example of where it doesn't work. So this is where you're going to have to get in here and do some of this manually or just dissolve out these random edges we have just kind of chilling. Like these little corners, I don't know what these are doing. So we can just get rid of them. This is a nice thing about not having to unwrap the high polys because if we did, we'd have to make so many different changes so frequently and just be annoying. Cool, so check that, check that, and um, get out of local view, Alt-H, and it looks like we're good to go. I'm going to actually remove these materials here just to keep everything nice and clean. Cool, so here's the high poly, and then here's the low poly. Once again, low poly, high poly, and you can kind of see how the detail is going to get big. You can get a nice preview. And this is probably going to bake very nicely because of how the details kind of overlaid when we preview the two. The form's following very nicely. I mean, everything's looking pretty good. And that's exactly what I was going for. So, yeah, I think this is going to bake borderline perfect. Well, I don't know about perfectly. There's always going to be some issues. But um, now we're going to go ahead and get this thing exported. So the first thing we need to do is um, make sure we name these things accordingly. So... For this one, I want to name it door underscore low. 
And then for the door underscore high, well, you can probably guess it. It's going to be door underscore high. But first of all, let me just find it. I'm not sure why it's all like weird like this, but anyways, door underscore high. And as for all these empties, I am deleting them. Delete. Don't need those. And don't need whatever the hell these cutters are doing. I'm going to delete those. And okay, cool. That's good. That's good. I think. I think we're fine. Anyways, so that's going to be door underscore high. And then we're going to have door underscore low. So that's fine. Um, let's make sure we're isolating these. And then we're going to have this one right here, which will just be back underscore low. You can name it whatever you want, of course. And then this one will be. Let me get rid of these as well because all the modifiers are applied. This will be back underscore high. Now these underscores are kind of important because you can sort them in um, Substance Painter based off the underscores and I think Marmoset requires it as well. This is just how I've always done it and it's worked for me. So what I need to do is go, let me turn off the objects here. We're going to turn on the door underscore low and I'm just going to Q settings export FBX which has selected objects ticked on. And we're just going to call this door underscore low and I'll just make a new folder on my desktop. Um, actually, I already have a folder right here, this game prepping folder or whatever. So that's door underscore low. And then we're going to have door underscore high. I keep getting these confused right here. Anyways, that's going to be door underscore high settings export FBX door underscore high. And we're going to do the same thing for these. We're going to go to back underscore high. So that'll be back underscore high. And then we'll have the back underscore low. So just make sure you keep those low and high naming conventions very important. Cool, so this looks pretty good. This is going to be the low poly, and now we're going to hop into Marmoset and get this thing baked. Cool, so Marmoset is not really tricky to learn. It's pretty easy. You go up here to New Bake Projects, and what we want to do is load in our... Let me find it. I don't need that folder anymore. Um, this game prepping folder, we're going to go to Door High and Door Low. We're going to do all the back ones later. For now, I just want these... So that's going to be door underscore high and door underscore low. And the controls are a bit weird. I'm still not used to them. You hold alt and left mouse button. You're going to see this thing loaded in just fine. Now what you want to check for are any, are any shading artifacts. Because if you get those, that indicates you had an issue with triangulation. But I'm not seeing any. Now the real teller is if the high poly worked. Because that's where you're most likely to um, have an issue. And it looks like the high poly was fine as well. Like I said, Blender's triangulation algorithm is pretty good at avoiding potential artifacts. If I just exported this straight into Marmoset and did not triangulate, this thing would be a collapsed mess of Geo. And this is why you can't use Ngons and games in that way, because it would automatically triangulate. But if you do it beforehand properly, um, you'll be good to go. So this is the high poly, right? So high poly, and of course we have the low poly. And we want to bake this, and this is really easy. Gonna go to 16 samples, gonna do a 16-bit channel, 4K, the normal stuff. Now I wanna bake curvature AO. Material ID, I'm probably gonna bake separately, so I'm just gonna leave these three. And what else do we need to do? I'm looking. You know, I think that's it. So what we're gonna do is go to preview, and we have to make an output path for the bake. So I'm just gonna go in here and just call this bakes. And we'll call this door. And I'm just going to save this as a um, PNG is fine. Then you just have to wait for Marmoset to do its thing. So let it bake. And eventually you're going to see kind of all the details will pop on it once it's done. It has to bake quite a few things, so it will take some time. But as you can see, it's working, doing its job. Not sure how long it's going to take, but I'll pause the video. Oh, never mind. It's done. There we go. That is a pretty clean bake, if I do say so myself.
That's amazing. This is why you should not use Blender's Baker. It can be done, but it's longer, not as accurate, and Marmoset just has the best bakes. And uh, I'd really recommend, even if you have to get like one less coffee at Starbucks per week, it's worth it. You can get the you can get Marmoset for 300 bucks per petrol license, which I have, or um, you can pay I think 16 bucks a month, and they might have like a student version or something. I'm not sure, but I mean, look at this. This is just this is fucking amazing. See this? I, I knew this bake was going to be be fine because I've just used Marmoset so much that I know how it's going to turn out and it's amazing. Now, this, <laughs> this bothers me. Remember I moved the high poly one up? I actually think I forgot to do that on the, um, okay, I did it on the low poly. I think I forgot to do that on the high poly. So I'm just going to go back in here and do that. And this is, you know, you're probably going to have to go in Blender here and there to fix that or fix little issues, but not really a big deal. We're going to move this up. And I'm just going to re-export this and bake. Okay, I don't know why that didn't move up. Cool, there we go. And then we just hop back in here and just um, literally export back over it. So this is going to be the door underscore high, right? Export over it. Hop back into Marmoset. And um, we're just going to have to bake it again, unfortunately. Not really a big deal, though. We go back in here. Run through it. 16... 16, do a 4K curvature, ambient occlusion. Um, we gotta load in those assets, of course. So door high, door low. Just make sure they're both in here. And then we just go back in and repeat the process. Cool, so you can do some pretty cool things in Marmoset, like painting skews, painting offsets, things like that. And um, normally you'd do that if it looked a bit two dimensional, but this bake was actually pretty clean that I don't have to do too much to um, change anything you're gonna see you might have some weird baking artifacts like on the inside and things you could paint out if it bothers you enough so like this for example is kind of annoying so I could come in here and paint the offset a bit and just kind of tap around there and sometimes it'll um, give you better results we'll just play with that this here is basically just a cage defining kind of the baking rays and how those get affected. So you can do that and you can play with things and just see if you can get a better result, which is always a good thing. Um, okay, I messed it up even more. Let's go back in here and let's clear it. Try it again. And you can hold control to kind of inverse the way it goes. I mean, you're only going to get so far in terms of the practical results here. So you can play with it and just kind of see what you can get. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, you can look at any bakes and really any game and kind of see it's, they're not always the cleanest. I'm going to clear that offset. I don't think that was a good job. But um, yeah, I mean, you can go in here and try to fix out those issues if they, uh, if they bother you. Because rest assured, they are going to be there. I mean, it's always going to happen. It's going to be something you have to deal with. So you can kind of try to get in here and play with this. I mean, I probably have to research kind of how the, the bake offset works a bit more. But um, overall, that's like the general strategy to using it. Where else do we have some baking issues? Kind of down here, there's some weird stuff going on. You can also use this estimate offset tool, which I actually just used and it... Um, actually kind of clean it up a bit so I mean there's a lot of things you can do to clean things up I'm not going to go too in depth on this video I'm turning this more into a tutorial and I originally just planned to work and uh, do things that way I think this is kind of a baked in artifact no pun intended but you know some of these you can only fix to a certain extent these are actually fixable surprisingly can try to do something like that um, you know just Kind of move around and see what you can get. Little baking artifact in here. I'm just going to do this off camera because it's so boring. Cool. So this is a result I'm actually happy with. And, you know, sometimes you can actually have bake artifacts that work to your advantage. Um, am I using this as an excuse? Eh, kind of. <laughs> because um, sometimes there's baking artifacts I actually see that almost look like edgeware. And you wouldn't even be able to tell a difference, especially once you add textures onto it. So, I mean, sometimes you'll get those good or good bad bakes, whatever you want to call them. 
um, and usually I'll just leave those there, but if they're just really obvious and look nasty, I do try to fix them. But uh, these are fortunately much smaller, you know, the smaller areas are where the bakes get more tricky, but this is actually a pretty clean result right here. And we can't see the back because of course we deleted the back. This is meant to be like a, a doorway behind that wall, right? And once you preview it, it actually saves the maps to the folder you define. So we don't have to do anything at this point. We can just save the scene and um, we'll just call this door and then save it. Then we can hop into Substance Painter and do some work. But obviously I want to bake the other one as well. So we'll do that real quick. So same exact idea. We go here, going to do 16 samples. 64 is just overkill in my opinion. We'll do a 4K because, you know, 4K. And we're going to load in these two and at this point we just cross our fingers that we have no disruptions well we shouldn't really have to cross our fingers because um we did a good job checking so uh, you should have noticed beforehand but this is just kind of a surefire way to know if there's issues and um, i don't see any and what's this what's this that is a weird artifact but i don't see any disruptions so i'll um i'll let them go Let's go to here, let's go to low, and at this point we just want to preview it, preview the bakes. We're going to have to make a new path. This one's going to be, um, we'll go back, PNG, and then just wait for Marmoset to do its thing. And just a few seconds here, and there we go. Very, very clean result. See, I thought these would bake okay. Did a pretty good job at baking, I, I think. Let me go back in here real quick. Did this one have the... Okay, it did. I was curious. Didn't know if that would happen. Okay, yeah, this is good. I don't see any real issues. This uh, this is actually, a, in terms of disruptions around the bakes, a bit better than the last one, but obviously less stuff was actually baked on here, so these little holes bake pretty well. Yeah, I like that. So that means the map should have saved at this point, and how do I clear out these errors? I don't need them. Anyways, we're um, just going to save this scene right here. We'll save it as back, tool bag scene, save. And now I'm going to hop into Substance Painter and get this thing to work. Alright, after a long and mighty and uh, powerful fight with Substance Painter, with Adobe products, we finally managed to figure out how to renew our subscription, because mine was apparently expired. It took me literally 20 minutes to simply find out where to hand the money to renew my uh, whenever adobe takes over shit guys i don't know what they're thinking they have good products but geez it's like their design of the websites are just god awful i sent them an email too i was like you guys gotta fix this shit this is ridiculous because <laughs> i was i was kind of pissed it shouldn't be that hard to hand someone money i'm like anyways i'm gonna get too annoyed over that but um what we're gonna do is import the door underscore low because we don't need the high poly anymore we've already baked the maps so document resolution is going to be 4k um normal map format we're gonna do a um a direct x but it, literally you just flip the green channels if you need to go to the other ones so it's like doesn't really matter which one you select so um what else do we need to do Okay, we need to import those maps. So we're going to go to Bakes, and we're going to select the three we have right here. And Import Cameras, Auto Unwrap. I don't think we need to do any of this. And we're just going to click OK. And just wait for this to load in. And there we go. Okay, cool. So now what we need to do is go here to the Texture Set Settings. We have the size. We're going to go in here and choose our normal map. And that'll load in. We're going to choose our ambient occlusion map. That's going to pop a lot more once that loads in, as you can see. And we also have our curvature map, which is so important for detecting the edges of our objects. So just as like a starter material, I always like to warm up with the Substance Painter, just because um, I want this bar to be on the bottom here. I'm going to switch it. I'm used to having that. They changed the Substance to Adobe Substance 3D. So it's not, they, they change things up a little bit. But um, overall, it still looks pretty much the same. So what I need to do in here is find myself a good material. So we're going to take a look. I'm actually still getting used to this myself. I guess they changed the, I, I would have preferred the names over here, but 
I'll probably get used to this, I guess. We're just going to kind of see what materials we have here by default. Um, there's probably some good ones. There's this guy. There's... What's this? Let's take a look at this one see how it looks. Um, what we're also going to probably need to do is uh, add some ID maps. That's probably going to be uh, something important worth doing. Let's just kind of see how these basic materials add at first. Yeah, not too bad. Okay, we're going to need an ID map. I almost forgot about that, but fortunately these are really easy to add in and I'll show you how. So here in Blender, what we do is we go into edit mode for our low poly and we just start um, selecting the portions we want to have the certain ID map on. So this is all joined together so things can get kind of tricky. So I'm just going to press... Um, Let's see, we'll go in here and just press the L key on these areas. And then what we have to do is we have to go into Vertex Paint. Click on this button right here, and what we can do is choose a new color. Shift K, and then it'll add a color to that area. And this is, you know, super easy stuff to add in. So we're going to have that. Um, we're going to need to grab one for here. And it's just kind of the same process. Just change the colors a little bit. As long as they're not the same hex code, you'll be good to go. And you also want to be able to differentiate them as well. Because that's kind of important. So I want these to all have the same type of material. So we're going to do that. We'll go into Vertex Paint. And for the ones that are like clearly going to be a different object, I'd recommend using a completely different color. Shift K. And it's going to give us that. So looks good. We're going to have this piece and then this piece. I'm just going to keep repeating the process, get like one of these or something. Shift K. Okay, I think I had the wrong selection here. Whoops. So I want it to be this one and this one. There we go. Let me move my mic a bit closer so I can actually sit back. There we go. I'm going to do Shift K. And we just keep hopping in and out of edit mode. It's a really easy process. I'm going to grab this this part of the pipe and this pipe right here okay evidently I can't select it so we'll just do that cool we'll go back into vertex paint we'll do like a yellowish color shift K the door should be easy enough we just press the L key and this is going to kind of be like a uniform material for that whole thing right there so we're going to go to Vertex Paint, and I want to make this one a very, very obvious color. We'll just do like a red, and that's really going to pop. This one I want to be completely unique, so it's going to be like a glass. So maybe to represent glass, we could do like a, um, I don't know, glassy type of color like that. And it's looking good. We just got to make sure we didn't miss any. Let's go back into Vertex Paint and take a look. Okay, going to have to get this one and get these little hinge pieces, so... Going to go in and press L here, press L here, and I think these hinge pieces should have the same thing as well. Keep it nice and uniform. We'll do like a purple. Oops, make sure you turn on this button right here, Shift K. And then I think the last one is this thing down here. So I'm going to go into edit mode. Press the L key, you're going to go to Vertex Paint, and then do like a super blue color. Maybe not, maybe like a pink. Cool, and that should be everything. Am I missing anything? I don't think so. Awesome, so we're just going to go in here. I'm just going to save this real quick. Make sure we have that. And what I do need to do here is um, re-export this. So we'll just do export FBX. Fortunately, we don't have to bake in Marmoset again, so don't worry about that. We just have to reload the substance stuff. So door underscore low. I'm going to load that in. We'll just hop back into substance, and it's just going to be super easy. 4096. Choose the low poly. Add the maps here. And the FBX should have the ID map kind of embedded in there. We just have to bake it in Substance, really easy. So, and Substance bakes are pretty good as well, so you could do it in Marmoset if you wanted to. I'm gonna discard that. We're gonna go here, select the normal, AO and curvature, just like we did before. We're gonna have a pretty clean result there. 
You can kind of see the difference with the AO. The AO is incredibly important. Really makes those crevices pop a bit more. Uh, anyways, now we need to go to bake mesh maps, and I want to bake the ID, and I don't want to bake anything else, so we're going to turn all of those off. And what is this? The I don't need... You can use the high definition mesh to determine ID maps, but in this case we don't need it. We're just going to do vertex color for this one, and bake selected textures, and boom, there we go. Now we have that ID map loaded in, as, uh, as you can see. Cool. So now say I wanted to add in like this um, glossy, but I only wanted to affect a certain area, I could go to add mask with color selection and then, for example, pick that color and the rest is pretty much good. So that's a pretty powerful technique to do stuff like that. Now I want the door to mostly be a, um, a white sci-fi type of color, so I do want to add some bump to it and things like that. Uh, what a lot of people like to say is, oh, you shouldn't be using smart materials, it's cheating, and this and that, and I think that's absolute bullshit, because why would I spend extra work using default materials when there's some pre-built ones I can customize? I understand, you know, the issue of repeated, similar type of textures you might see on, like, ArtStation, but uh, when you customize it, you won't really see that, and situations like this don't even show that much anyway, so what I'm going to do is come in here and just kind of see... How these are affecting the different areas just kind of you know dirt scratches things like this I'm gonna remove the base color right there I think that'll look nice and we have scratches and we have that which I think I am gonna remove as well I don't want those and we can just really come in here and you know add additional stuff but uh, the main type of style I'm going for is like this you know whitish looking laboratory door now obviously these hinges and stuff are going to be metal, so we're going to want to use some sort of metal and I'm going to kind of come in here and just see what looks good. I can try this iron old, which probably shouldn't be old because, you know, this is like a sci-fi material. We can go in here and look. Yeah, something like that would be good. Then what we can do is add a mask with color selection and pick, um, you know, those areas right there and that would look pretty cool and you can come in here and add some edge wear and stuff like that all right what I want to do here is add in a fill layer and I want to make sure we're only affecting the roughness on this one and I want the roughness to be like incredibly low here and then I want to drop a mask with color selection and assign it to that one and just kind of see how that looks it's not really a window type of effect now is it um, let's go to color and try just playing with the color here. I guess like a lower black value kind of gives a cleaner result. I was trying to use these materials here. They just didn't look very good for what I wanted. So I just did something a bit more manual and it kind of gets the job done. It's going to look a lot better, you know, in Blender if we render this anyways. I dropped a few more um, of these materials here. I just went to the second one just use the color selection I can keep picking the colors as I please so I dropped a few more there I want to have like a main black and white contrast here for that good sci-fi feel all right so I'm definitely gonna want to do some normal stamping at some point but um, for now I want to get a little bit of edge damage and just kind of see how that looks you don't want to make it too too damage or kind of will lose that sci-fi feel in my opinion so let's see we could do hmm there's some smart materials already built up, but I think I'm going to do this one manually and kind of figure out exactly what I want. Um, let's try... Okay, that's the glass. This is the dirty. This is the iron forged. Let's just look for something like this. Put it at the top and see how that looks. Okay, I don't like that one. I don't like this one probably gonna be pretty picky with this one so bear with me this isn't too bad it's a bit heavy on the um on these values we'll have to see okay um what I want to try is adding in a black mask here and then I want to generate the white values through a generator on the edge wire so we're gonna go to curvature and just kind of play with that and yeah, that really pop well, obviously it's too heavy, but it definitely is going to pop once we adjust these parameters here. So I want to go to global balance and 
just kind of play with that there's that looks good. I kind of like that blur or um balance rather uh, but what I do want to do is kind of pull it in a bit more so we got to go to the curvature drop down and really work with this and generally what I'm doing is just playing with the sliders and seeing what does what that's like literally all I'm doing here because it's kind of self-explanatory what these sliders do but you don't really know for sure until you play with them so usually I just kind of go in here and I see like you know what exactly kind of gets me the result I want we can make the balance a bit lower cool that's not too bad I'm gonna to want to paint that out using the mask in a little bit because I obviously don't want that to go around the glass it doesn't make any sense brightness is oh there we go the brightness is what is kind of solving that issue and you're just gonna see that as that little subtle kind of like sci-fi pop to it see that that's exactly what I'm going for and the question is do I want to apply it to every area and I mean it doesn't look bad but let's just see how it looks by only applying it to um, this area right here going to also add in a color selection and just pick this area and just swap those and just kind of see the difference I think it's fine um, can't turn that off and see but yeah I think it's I think it's a bit better so I'm gonna do that this has that really nice edge wear to it you can turn it off and on and it just has that nice subtle pop to it and that's exactly why we have that curvature map going on okay so that's good um, the easiest way to get rid of this area right here you know where it's kind of rusting around that glass is to simply paint it out using a um, black brush so we're gonna come in here we're gonna need to right click and add in a paint and the properties and we want to make sure the grayscale is set to the black value otherwise it's going to end up painting it in which I don't actually want so we're going to turn that to a black value and just really get in here and just get rid of this it's really going to get in and just do this carefully because I want to make sure I'm not you know painting out those areas and I could probably pile on generators so it's kind of you know distributed around the curve but um I think it has that nice sci-fi feel where it is so you know we could play with it later but I like kind of how it's set up now we're gonna really have to get in here and take care of this area I suppose it's fine in there so we can maybe just what I could have done is drop the flow a little bit but I've already committed so this is kind of like how I work in Photoshop. I'm very, you know, meticulous with how I work. I want to make sure the detail is just right because, you know, quality game assets are something that I um I think I can have a lot of appreciation for because you can really see a game asset and be like, "Wow, someone put a lot of work into that and really paid attention to detail when it mattered." And that's kind of the effect I want to have. So, there we go. This looks so much better with that effect on the edges. Just less um less boring right a bit more of a feel to it and I'm gonna go back in here to the curvature and just play with it a bit more and just kinda of see you know what these values even do some of these values are a bit heavy and we're just gonna end up messing with that mask if I do too much so just gonna undo that alright cool um Let's just play with the balance a little bit more. I know I'm really sticking on this, but and you're going to see it kind of pops in there a little bit more than I wanted it to. But I kind of like, kind of like that position. It's a hard decision to make. We'll go to like 0.38 and just make it a bit heavier and then if we just go back to the paint this will be a really easy area to paint. And I'm not going to bother with that inside there. It's not a big deal. So what I'm going to do is, okay, that's the hardness. I'm always mixing these up. I don't think the controls to kind of scale the brush up and whatnot is very intuitive. That is one thing I hope gets changed in the future, but I doubt it because it's already in like all the tutorials and defaults. So I'll eventually get used to it. So this is looking, yeah, it looks really nice. All right, we can probably, you know, pile on more detail later. Uh, for now, I want to do some normal stamps. And before I do a normal stamp, I want to add on a fill layer. 
and through this fill layer I want to run a stand or like um like an alpha right so I need to go in here and find my alphas so what we need to do is um oh it's up here right we're gonna go to alphas and I want to right click add a black mask here and then add a fill and then under the grayscale I'm gonna use this um little decal that I imported from um from decal machine from Blender and I'm just going to use this as a grayscale value and what I want to do is actually have a bit more control over this so there's some projection settings um, that you know you can play with you can try like triplanar and all that good stuff actually and but you know I want to actually paint it on so instead of using fill we can do paint and for the paint right here we can do a grayscale that way so it's not actually filling then if I paint that in it should That'll work. I just got to make it a, a different color here. So we're going to go in and first of all, let's go in here and make this base color really dark and go into the paint. Cool. And I also need to make the hardness all the way up. Cool. And this is like a bug that happens. I think it's a bug at least. What we need to do is find the full preview. There we go. It's not a bug, but sometimes there's like issues where it doesn't show up, and I wish it was a bit more obvious. I had to actually look that up on YouTube. Thankfully, someone in a comment showed how to do it. So we have this, and you know what might be a better alpha? Instead of just having a really clean, it's still using the wrong al um, alpha brush, but you know, instead of having it really clean, maybe having this like, you know, broken up or something and kind of deteriorated a bit would be pretty cool. So we could actually go in here and try to change that um, that option. So in the brushes, we can just go in here and just kind of play with it and see exactly what options there are, right? So we could go in and play with that. That's a bit too heavy now, isn't it? I'm still using the wrong hotkeys. You just want to find one that, because like this, you can't see anything. It has to be pretty, you know, decent, right? We got to make sure it still makes sense. So we're going to go in here and just find something that is going to work. And you know what might be a better idea? Using just a very simple um, one like this that doesn't actually have any bends around it. We'll place it and then just do that a bit more manually. So first let's just place this. It's a bit too big. Got to make sure it's just the right size. I'm going to do that. And geez, these hotkeys are just really annoying. I'm not a fan of them at all. I'm gonna rotate that a bit and right about here. Yeah, that looks good, that placement. I just want to make sure it's straight. Because I know it's gonna bother me. It's gonna be how straight things are. That looks good. And then what we could do is simply go into like a more manual brush. So instead of using this grayscale, we can remove the grayscale, go into like some, you know, dirty brush here and make the grayscale value um, incredibly low and then just kind of, you know, splash something here and there. But I want to use a low flow value for that one instead of like a full, you know, splash, we can just do something really low. And I could probably use the tablet for this, but I don't have it out right now, so I'm just going to kind of tap it with my mouse cursor and... Just kind of see what results I can get. I don't want to make it too heavy. I just kind of want to get in there and do a splash here, a splash there. Because I think that'll look a bit nicer. And some of this you might actually want to have like, you know, removed almost to a certain point. But that's just not going to look very good now, is it? So I'm just going to kind of play with that. It's too heavy. I'm not going to go that heavy on it. I'm just going to Oops. I, I am so done with this um with these hotkeys here. Now that's pretty good. I'm going to go back to white values and kind of Oops. Just stamp this out a little bit. Let's kind of get in there and it's going to get around there, so I'm just trying to avoid that. Eh, I think that's fine. This is a bit heavy right here. I'm going to go back to a softer brush. 
There we go, something like this. I am really liking that, it looks good. I'm just gonna rename this to O3 because I always like to stack layers. This one is for the curviness, I don't know, curvature. Let's call it curvature. Okay, we're gonna have that, that's the glass. We have all this good stuff. Okay, awesome. That looks good. I'm gonna make some normal stamps in these spots now. So to do that, what we need to do is add in a fill layer, I believe, and we're gonna need to use the normal information only. And if we just go in here, we can actually choose those. So say, for example, go in teaching mode again. If I wanted to use one of these, I could just, you know, drag it in. Then we have that. I keep using fill. It needs to be a paint layer. There we go. So that way I can actually paint it in. I'm going to take this, drag it in, and that should stamp just fine. Cool. That's not too bad. Let's see what else we have. Um, I'm going to go to the normals only, if I can find them. Fortunately, we can just sort it here and just kind of see what little options we have. Because there's quite some cool ones in here that I really liked, but this isn't too bad either. Let's see how this one looks. Very similar. We're going to do this one. I think that was the same one. I don't remember. I'm going to go in here and stamp that one in. Now, this might seem pretty, you know, useless because you can't really see it, but this is all these stamps I'm about to add are going to really add up. And this is the same decal process I'd usually be doing in Blender. And maybe I will add some more decals in Blender. It all depends. But for right now, I'm just um, really trying to get something cool. Maybe in this one, we'll do something different. So. Um, that decal I had earlier was pretty detailed, so perhaps this one could be like, I'm going to drag this in, it could be like a vent type of thing. I don't like that. And I'm sure I could import some, you know, manual ones if I wanted to and just play with it that way, but there's plenty of options here to really work with. I'm going to try this one. Also, I need to make sure that hardness is up. Let's do, let's do the vent. I think the vent will be the coolest one here. Gonna need to make this a bit bigger. Yeah, that looks nice. See the difference? Just really pops that way. Cool. I like that. We're gonna have to add in more stamps, of course. We could maybe do like a little something right here. Does that look cool or is that too much? I like it, but let's see how this one looks. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Also, what I think would be cool is to have like a, a signifier using colors because the immediate place that we can pull attention to is to the door handle, which is where you actually want to open that thing. So, you know, the immediate attention pull needs to go to right here. So I just pointed at it as if you could see it. Um, anyways, I'm going to add in a fill layer and what we're going to do is make this fill layer like a reddish type of color and what we're gonna do is add a black mask and then color selection and just move it to that and that's gonna really be a good indicator for like where to go that you know immediately the attention is gonna be pulled to this portion right here and I just realized there's a little bit of leak in that area you know what I think happened I think the ID map is leaking into this area so what I can do is um let's remove this alpha right here or get a new one type in shape and that's like the default one I think and then we can probably get in here and um, just fix that up manually like that this is where a tablet could be pretty useful no one's gonna really see this this is just me once again spending a bit more time than usual I'm kind of on my own schedule on this one so I could probably get away with it and that's totally fine if I missed anything if anything it looks like edgeware so who cares all right so we have that and I could probably add in a bit of dirt here no so let's go in here add in a generator and actually I need to run a new material on that so we'll just we're just gonna wait for now this red will do 
Looks pretty damn cool, I like that. You know, it pulls the attention here immediately, and if I ever wanted to change the color, I could just, you know, get in here. And maybe like a... Maybe a deeper red. I kind of like the darker feel to it, but a deeper red could also look pretty cool. Kind of like that. I don't know, I think they all look pretty good. It just depends on the style you're going for, I assume. Now I want to add a bit more dirt here, so what I'm going to do is take this steel, drop it on the top, I'm going to add a black mask, and then just generate some dirt. Just a very basic dirt overlay, because I think it'll look cool. Now we obviously don't want it to be this heavy, we want to just have a very, very um, subtle portion. You're going to see that one pulls in pretty heavily. Okay, we have that, we have the dirt contrast, which you can play with. It really affects this area pretty heavily, I've noticed. Looks pretty cool though, I, I honestly like that. Triplanar blending contrast, all this stuff, grunge amount could kind of drop that a bit but I almost like how it's kind of covering it's like an icy effect almost it's pretty cool um, we can drop the opacity whoops just kind of make it very subtle yeah that looks cool I like that now what we definitely need is some sort of material to apply to those hooks right there so I'm gonna add in another steel and this one's going to have the same thing, a mask with um, a uh, color selection. So we're going to come in here, add a black mask, add a color selection. going to pick that. And let's see. can make the base color a bit, I don't know, a bit varied right there because why not? And what we're going to call is just call this the hinges. This one is going to be overlay dirt. This one right here is going to be handle. I always like to keep my names in order so I know exactly what it's referring to. Um, and this one right here is just the metal pieces. This one is just general dirt. There we go. So now we got this whole thing in order. Cool, so I definitely want to do some more work here. I want to keep putting in normals and things like that. So let's go back to the normals layer and just keep building on that. I'm fine with just not adding another one. I could duplicate it, but we'll just keep doing the normals this way because we're, we've already committed. So we're going to go in here and just look for a cool looking normal. And notice how I'm very strategically placing these details. I don't put them willy nilly like I used to. I've actually kind of progressed a lot in that regard in terms of how to play stuff. So we want to come in here and can put a line there. Let's do a symmetrize. Let's go into, where's the symmetrize button? Right here. Cool. And I want to symmetrize over the Z. It's not like perfectly over it, so I might need to offset that value a bit. Right to about there. That should be like perfectly centered. Cool. And then we can do something like that. Awesome. We'll turn that off. This is really looking cool. I think we could definitely drop some sort of thing in here because this is like... This is cut out, but it looks like something should be there. And, you know, empty space is good, but in this case, I... Uh, I don't mean to get distracted, but good lord, look at these bevels. They are sexy. Look at that. This is why I use mid-poly, because they just look so much better overall. I love it. Cool. So we're going to get in here and put some sort of... Oh, where the hell did the... um? Where did it go? Oh, it's right here. I couldn't notice because that normal line was so small. Cool. We're going to drop that in. See how this one looks. Not sure what that is. Ew, that looks awful. Maybe I won't put anything in there. Maybe I'll just leave it like... Just like a simple line. Can I double click on these to add it in? Maybe I can just um, use the little small helper in here and make life a bit easier. I'm just always used to the left hand side because there's a bit more to see. Okay, I'm going to do that. Maybe just like a small little line just to make some more visual interest. Now that looks awful as well. You know what? I'll just leave it empty. 
Maybe, maybe it was meant to be empty, so we'll do that. But these normal stamps are really powerful. This is why I removed that little grate we had earlier, because I knew I could just do a normal stamp for it, so... I should probably also look on other websites to see what type of, you know, options are out there in terms of downloading these things, because these are pretty cool. I can do something like that. Now I need to make sure the... Let's make this a little bit lower. We can do something like that. Maybe we could even add in symmetry line right there. Or down here, and do something like that. I don't like that. I don't think the symmetry fits properly. Whenever I'm not feeling it, I just don't add it because my brain's telling me no for a reason. That's kind of my philosophy. Okay, this is looking really good. Um, we already put a stamp on there. I don't think there's much more to add. We could definitely add a little bit of visual interest right here. So what I'm going to do, so first of all, increase that hardness. I'm not messing up my key movements anymore as much because they seem to be clicking now. Okay, let's just do a, a simple line. The simple line one is always pretty nice to work with. You just go in, you can drop it in, and yeah, I think that fits just fine. That actually pops a bit more that way as well. And I'm very strategically placing these details. A lot of people kind of place stuff willy-nilly and, and no apparent location, and that's not how good design works. And I know this because a year and a half ago I had some pretty shitty designs and um, I worked my ass off the past year and a half trying to improve that and you can do the same exact thing and um, In like a year you can really grow you just have to put in a lot of work. I promise you guys I, I'm not the most creative person contrary to what some people might think <laughs> I made a video on that um, The other day and some people were like I'm surprised you you know still get your mental blocks and well no creative blocks rather and of course I do because I'm not super naturally gifted at this and I think there's a certain level of skill you're born with but I certainly don't have a lot of it so you know some people would have probably spotted what to put at this point meanwhile I'm just moving things around randomly with no apparent motivation at this point okay there's some rectangles in here that might look cool and I don't think I want to put any on the top here I'm just kind of playing with it and just seeing just for a visual idea how that would look. I don't think I'm going to put anything there. It just has to fit. If it if it doesn't flow correctly with the details, then it's probably not meant to be, so I'm just going to, you know, ignore it and move on to something else. So we're going to go in here. Come this way. That doesn't look good either. Maybe we'll just take a break. You know, one thing I've always learned is that if you're kind of stuck on something, move on to another part of it and it'll eventually come back to you through ideas generated by working on different areas. Now what we could probably do here is go to the side and maybe put in some additional um, alphas here. So what I'm going to do is add in, we'll do a fill layer and what we'll do is make this a really dark color. We'll add in a black mask and then we'll add in a paint right here. Now what I want to look for is um, just kind of see what the options are for the these alphas right here. Just look for some sort of like, you know, disclaimer text or not disclaimer, but like property rights and all that BS, whatever it is. Authorized personnel only. You have to kind of consider, does this make sense? Will anyone even see this on the side? Probably not, so you have to really think about that. I don't even know if I want to put this here at all. I'm just kind of thinking about it, you know? And we need to have a really... Okay, the spacing is way off. Yeah, I need to remove that position jitter there. But I think it's just going to be, it's going to be too cluttered. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We've really got to try it and see. It's not bad, it's just... I don't know. Something feels off. And my rules for when things feel off are to not put it. Now on the side here, we could definitely put something interesting. I don't know if there's any thing that looks cool. 
Let's see. This could be pretty cool. Maybe this is like an entrance door to something that's, you know, cold on the inside. I don't know. I want to put that, you know, align that with something that kind of fits. We could see what else there is in here. You know, maybe this is at the entrance to some sort of radiation bunker. But then if we put that, that might indicate this is radioactive. So, you know, these are the type of things I'm thinking about in my head. Does it make sense? Does it not make sense? I don't know. That's up for you to decide. There's a lot of interesting ones in here, but honestly nothing that I think I want. I'll keep looking. Maybe something generic that's more open-ended would be okay. That's kind of like a medical symbol, so you really got to be careful. I don't know, this is like a cool recycling sign. I don't know what that is, but it looks interesting. Not like a normal recycling sign, so maybe we could do like a... Just a little something on the side there. I don't like that either. I don't know. Let's see how a panel would look over here. What we can do is hop into our normal section and just kind of take a look at how one of these panels look. I'm going to search for normals, normal. There we go. And just kind of see what panels we have. It's quite a few. I wish there were a bit more, but can't have everything. We'll try this one and just... Okay, this is a... Whoever made that one forgot to cut off the bottom portion. So that is not going to fly with me. This one we could see it might be too cluttered, but we're going to try it. Yeah, something doesn't fit right with me on this one. Might just be better to keep it empty, to be honest with you. Whenever this happens, I'm just going to go with something relatively simple. We could just do a little notch like this. I'm going to want to rotate that a little bit and move that down. And then just something small could always bring a bit of visual interest to areas that are just a tad bit too empty for my liking. So you could do something like that and that could work. And then we could even flip it 180 degrees. Do something around here. And that kind of makes it pop a bit more in my opinion. I like that. So we've done a lot here. This video has gone on for pretty long. So I think I'm going to do a bit more of this off camera because now it's just kind of getting redundant. And um, I'll show you the final result. I think it's good where it is. I think you've probably learned a lot at this point. Um, one more thing I do want to show. And it's up here. Um, you can change the quality of these shaders to something higher, and it'll actually pop a bit more. I don't know why it's set to low, I assume just depends on the software you're using and also your machine, but this is a bit higher quality. You can kind of see it really begins to pop. You could do ultra, I think that's just overkill. And um, you can also change the HDRI settings, which is in here. You can just kind of take a look at the different HDRIs and kind of see how it lights up that way. I'm going to import the HDRI that we had in Blender. We'll just import that to library, import, and just see how that one works in here. It should have loaded in. We just got to find it. I believe it's here in environments. Yep, here it is right here. Okay, I think that needs... um rotated see this this hri just looks a lot better this kind of has that more sci-fi feel to it so there's that one and this was the one we had before um whoops that was the wrong one environment rotation i don't know they both look pretty good it's kind of hard to determine i don't know what do you think it's a very tricky one to figure out they both look good it's this one's a bit wider this one's a bit more kind of like getting picked up by the sun. I don't know. I, I think they're both equally as good. It just depends on the kind of color tint you want. But I think I'm going to go with this one because we had that one in Blender. You know, I don't think I'm going to make any changes here. I, I looked around and I, I really looked for anything that I just felt was off. And to be honest, I am really happy with the result here. I, I think this is a um, pretty good set of textures. Everything looks really nice. And if we... What is this right here? I was kind of debating whether to put this one in or not but I actually decided against it because I think it pulls too much attention 
away and it kind of causes a clutter of detail here composition wise and I don't actually want that so I'll see how this looks if I were to disable everything here look at that boring I mean substance painter is just absolutely amazing and let's compare this to blender let's compare this to um, my original file here we go so here's the original with literally just uh, BSDF materials and blender and here is how the um, substance painter result looks it's just it's so much better. I mean, look at the difference. I, this is cool, but there's no grunge and all the natural stuff that you'd see on a door like this. This is almost too perfect. And perhaps you want that. Maybe it's like an airlock or something. I don't know. But this just looks better to me. So we need to go ahead and export out all of these textures here. We're going to go to File, Export Textures. Now, it's important to mention that Blender uses OpenGL, so we need to make sure we flip the normal orientation to the green channel or whatever. So let's go to here. We're going to have the PBR metallic roughness. And what I want to do is um, duplicate this. And on this one, I just want to go here. And um, where's the normal? Which one do I do? it? Do I just click on, drag it in? Yeah, that's what I do. Like that. So now we're going to be running the OpenGL or however that works. And finally, we need to add in an AO channel. So... Um, the best way to do that is to create a, I kind of forget, <laughs> honestly I forget how to do it, I need to watch the substance tutorial again. Okay, I'm pretty sure what you do, I remember I saw a tutorial on this a while ago, but I'm pretty sure you do the grace, I, I really wish it was set up better here, I shouldn't have to go through all this random code looking stuff and hope it works. <laughs> The AO should be there by default. I don't need the emissive, but I'm pretty sure that is what you're supposed to do for AO. So, yeah. Been a while since I hopped on that one, so um, we'll see what happens, I guess. I'm pretty sure that's it. And another thing I need to do um, is make sure I go to the filters here. I need to go to normals, and let me just look at the one up here so I know it actually works. I need to add in a filter, I believe. And in the filter, there should be something for the... Yeah, this matte effects HBAO, and I'm pretty sure that pops the AO a bit, if I'm not mistaken. We need to actually change the source to normal, not height, and then it should work. Let's check. I think the reason it's not working is because I don't have the AO channel listed in here, so let's just add that, and now we can check. There we go, now it's working. I was like, what the heck? Now it's just gonna give it a bit of AO in those areas, especially right here. You're gonna kinda see it. It just pops a bit more and makes things just a bit more natural. Right here, you're gonna see the same thing. It really just pops and makes the normal map areas darker, which is precisely what I'm going for, especially these vents, and just gonna make things look a little bit better. Just kinda look all around. Yeah, see this one? This one really begins to pop, and that's exactly what I'm going for. Okay, cool. Now I think we're actually ready to export this thing. I'm going to go to File, Export Textures. I'm going to use that output template. I guess it didn't save. Annoying, that's okay. We'll make a duplicate. And then here we're going to remove the emissive because I don't need that. We're going to... Oops, not that one. We're going to go here. Control C, Control V. AO and then drag in the ambient occlusion here is gray channel and I'm pretty sure that will get us the result we want so we're gonna have uh, what are we gonna have ambient occlusion base color height metallic mixed AO okay normal normal direct X and roughness that's fine so what I want to do is export this into let's see I'm gonna go to this I'm gonna make a new folder and we'll call this exports. And what do I need to do on this one? The output template needs to be that's PBR copy right there. File type we'll just do PNG. Let's do 16 bit. And the size 4096 for sure. Leave the padding as is and then click on export and bring this guy into Blender. So now that we have the low poly right here, let me. 
increase the size of this a bit. So as you can see with the low poly, now we can actually drag in these maps and see how all this looks in Blender because I prefer cycles anyway. So what we're going to do is select this thing. We're going to need to add, we'll just do the UVs material or just add a new one and call it substance. So we still have that UVs material if we ever want it. I also make a power save of this one. I'm going to go to the shader editor and if you have node wrangler turned on, you can control shift T this guy. We're going to go to exports and let's just preview these so hopefully these will pop up so we have the normal roughness base color height i want all of these so we're going to load all of those in and just check to see how this works displacement normal um, roughness metallic base color it all looks good to me so we're going to hop into cycles and take a look and there we go bring that right into blender and we have a much cleaner result in my opinion so that's it guys i know this was a super long video but hopefully some of you were able to watch it and kind of just study and observe this is also a game ready asset i could bring this into unreal engine and i'll do that as a little bonus right here to show you so what we would basically do is import we'll go to the low poly fbx file and i'll just import everything quickly Gonna go in here, move this up, and how is it? WASD. Yep. Gonna come down here. We'll just put that right where it is. Maybe we should rotate it just so it's kind of facing the, you know, the sun. We can actually see things. Yeah, like right here. And we're gonna import the export files right here. And you're just going to connect them up to the material so unfortunately you have to go nodes in here as well but they're pretty easy to get used to you'll go in here and um oh i just realized you can't see the whole screen so move this over make this a bit bigger and on this one basically what we do is we come in we drag our base color i'm going to connect that up Okay, that's the base color. Then we have our ambient occlusion, which I believe we can just plug in this way. It's been a, been a while. Here we got the metallic, and I think that's a blue channel here, if I'm not mistaken. Normal map, incredibly important. We don't want to forget that. Gonna connect that up. We have the roughness map, and I believe it's red to roughness. And then we also have our, what am I missing? Metallic base color. Oh, we have the height, but I'm not going to bother with that. I think it's fine. So we have one, two, three, four, five connected. And if we just apply this, we might have to add in a multiply node. Sometimes it ends up too shiny or vice versa. We're going to have to see. What I'm probably going to end up doing here is adding in a um, scalar parameter which will just be multiplied by two. So we're gonna go in here and for the roughness, what I wanna do is connect this up there and then we're gonna do a multiply node. So we'll go here and, no, sorry, that goes in there. And then this one should be here and then connect the red and it should kind of make things a bit rougher. Just kind of playing with it to see, but you get the idea. You can you can play with the settings that way and whatnot. But as you can see, the textures apply in here just fine, no issues. Even if we go into wireframe and take a look, let's go to where is the visual stuff? It's under advanced. We're going to go to show advanced mesh edges, and as you can see, it's no problem. You just got to get everything set up properly, and it's going to work just fine as a static game asset. So. Um, yeah, anyone who's saying don't use ungons in your games, I mean, it, it's just an all-encompassing statement that isn't necessarily true. It depends what you're doing. Um, it, it's, it's such a broad subject that you can't simply just add that statement and assume it's correct for everything. But there we go. That's in Unreal Engine. I prefer to have it in Blender for rendering stuff. And this is it in Substance Painter. Hope the video helped. And by the way, if it did, guys, I'm going to link the... Um, the game asset guide it's a pdf we have you can download it for free it has a ton of cool stuff you can grab it on our website um, so click the link in the top of the description go and grab that you can use it as a reference when you're making game assets so 
That's about it for today's video. Thanks so much. Drop a like if it helped, and I'll see you in the next video.